Good morning to everybody. We are going to start the program. Dr. Nichikesh, sir, one of our experts is going to join. Namaskar. Sir, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes madam. Please continue. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on food processing and value addition, innovations, opportunities, and government schemes organized by the Department of Processing and Food Engineering, College of Technology and Engineering, MPOAT, Udaipur, sponsored by IDP, under NHP ICR New Delhi. The world is uh, full of diamonds and gems, and we are having some of them here today to build this event. With this note, I would like to give my heartiest welcome to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Dr. Narendra Singh Ji Rathor. Due to his some urgent occupancy, he is not able to join, though he has conveyed his blessings I uh, welcome Dr. S. K. Sharma, sir, Director, Directorate of Research, as Chief Guest of today's program. Dr. Nachiket Kotwali Wale, Director, ICR CPET. Dr. Sanjay Kumar Dash, Bhubaneswar. Dr. P. M. Chauhan, sir, Professor J. U. Junagar, as expert speakers. Dr. P. K. Singhji, sir, P. I. I. D. P. and Dean C. D. A. Dr. N. K. Jain, Dean C. D. F. T. Dr. Virendra Nepalya, sir. And all other respected guests, faculty members, friends, and dear students. It is mark of our undying tradition to invoke the Almighty at the beginning of any important event. I call upon the technical team to play for us the traditional lamp as a tribute to Mother Saraswati. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
，你是给我们的生命，今天来引导我们，说。Your huge presence from across the state in this important webinar reflects its significance. Better roadmap for implementation of the government schemes, effective management of stakeholders involved in the process. The focus of today's webinar is exclusively related to the production, processing linked innovation, opportunities, and government schemes. I now invite Dr. Sanjay Kumar Jansar, Head Processing and Food Engineering, CTA, to briefly read about the webinar. Good morning, everybody. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Good morning and very warm welcome from Lake City to all the persons, experts, presently connected online in this webinar. Our chief guest of this webinar, Dr. S.K. Sharma, sir, and in absentia, head of our university, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Narendra Singh Ji Rathod Sahab, Convener of the webinar, Dr. P.K. Singh, sir. Today's expert speakers of the webinar, Dr. Nichiket Potwaliwale, sir. Director, ICAR, Central Institute of Post Harvest Engineering and Technology, Ludhiana. Dr. S.K. Das, D. College of Agricultural Engineering and Technology, OUAT, Uneshwar. And Dr. P.M. Chauhan, Professor, Junagar Agriculture University, Junagar. Dr. Mahesh Kothari, Dr. Nikita Vadhavan, Dr. B.K. Sharma, sir, deans and directors of the university, co-convener of this webinar, Dr. N.K. Jain, sir, dean CDFT, co-organizing secretaries, Dr. P.S. Champawar, senior professor, Dr. Vikramaditya Dhaveji, head electrical engineering, Dr. N.L. Pawar, sir, head of department, renewable energy, Heads of departments, faculty members, student coordinators, and all the participants. On behalf of the organizing committee, I, Dr. Sanjay Kumar Jain, as organizing secretary, welcome you all in this webinar. The idea of this organizing this webinar was conceived in the address of mentor of most of us, Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir, who at many times emphasized the need of innovations and opportunities in completing agriculture sector and special emphasis on the food processing and value addition. Since 2000, our Honorable Sir is advocating to set up the processing industries at production catchment areas. During his tenure at the ICR, he has took many important policy by decisions which were later become the part of the government schemes and one of them is to make agriculture as a professional degree. The second, he initiated the task to reduce the post harvest losses and the government of India took note of this and started one program, Prime Minister Formalization of the Micro Food Processing Enterprises, PMFME scheme, in which the concept of ODOP, one district, one program was given. This will help to set up food processing units at the production catchment area. On one side, it will reduce the post harvest losses of the food materials, and on the other hand, this will also helpful for enhancing the rural economy. It will also be helpful for increasing the farmer's income. 
even after joining our university our vice chancellor sir has floated many innovative ideas like a starting of the digital technology cell in which the use of artificial intelligence and internet of things in agriculture and allied sectors i would like to mention here that one of our student phd student is working on the development of the iot based eat pump prayer many innovations have taken place in the food processing sector in the last decade especially during the pandemic when the people were looking for immunity booster and healthy food these innovations have developed many opportunities and many, and many new startups have come up the government policies are also encouraging the new setups and there are many government schemes which are helpful for hand holding also some of these schemes for supporting the startups and providing subsidies are pmfme1 mudra prime minister employment generation program stand up india etc and for the skill development some of the schemes are the pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana supported by national skill development council today we are having with us three eminent speakers dr dichikat kotwaliwale sir will be speaking on the various innovations in food processing sector and will be start sharing his experiences on the topic engineering the path of prosperity to through post harvest interventions dr s k das sir will be speaking on the various entrepreneurship opportunities presently prevailing in the food processing and value addition of the food materials dr p m johan sir will be sharing his experiences highlighting the various government policies and the scheme of the sector i am sure that the deliberations of this webinar will be fruitful and helpful to all the participants and some of them will definitely start new food processing in this enterprises the concept of the odop in the pan india will also encourage and will help to start the rural enterprises in the production catchment areas with this background thank you very much thanks a lot thank you sir we still have to take several more big steps to take our efforts to the next level to increase our speed and scale too this is merely not an opportunity but it becomes responsibility of each one of us to achieve big goals with collective efforts and to create atmanirbhar bharat with these thoughts in mind i invite dr pk singh ji sir convener of this webinar pi idp and dean cta for his welcome address thank you thank you madam uh, am i audible yes sir the chief guest of the today's program dr sk sharma sir director of research mahana pratap university of agriculture and technology udaipur eminent speaker dr sanjay das dean college of agriculture engineering odisha university of agriculture and technology bhuneswar dr nachiket director icr seafood dr p n chauhan sahab professor and head junagadh agriculture university dr nepaliya sahab osd dr n k jain sahab dean cdft all my fellow dean directors dr mahesh kothari organizing secretary of this program dr sanjay jain dr dave dr nikita dr pamar dr rajpurohit dr champavat and dear students i extend warm welcome to our esteemed honorable vice chancellor as uh, due to some engagement uh, he could not attend this meeting but this particular program was framed under the dynamic leadership of our honorable vice chancellor who is always motivating us and our students for developing entrepreneurship among them our university is doing lot of efforts particularly to develop entrepreneurship among the students and idp is a, a good platform on which we can provide a number of opportunity to our students in every setup our honorable vice chancellor has pointed out number of times that we can do some innovative idea 
and under that respect our honorable vice chancellor sir has started number of activities dr sanjay jain was mentioning that our university has started digital technology cell artificial intelligence and data science in that respect also particular revenue generation cell number of activities innovative activities were started in the university and in this concept also particularly food food processing and value addition the innovation opportunities and government scheme this particular program was also initiated under the motivation and encouragement of our honorable vice chancellor sir as you are all of you are well aware that in the food processing technology there is a lot of opportunity that we can grab particularly under the secondary agriculture if we talk about the secondary agriculture then food processing is one of the important topic where our students can do lot of activities related to development of entrepreneurship at this particular moment i also welcome my three eminent speakers particularly dr sanjay das dr nachiket kotwali wale and dr pm chauhan and it is really a proud moment for me that all these three eminent speakers are alumni of cta and all these three eminent speakers are uh, with us uh, this is a very great moment for me because uh, when i was a student of cta all these three students were also three eminent speaker were also living with us in the hostels welcome to all the three my colleagues my fellow my friends uh, in this particular um, webinar uh, before i start uh, to continue some more words i extend warm welcome to our director research and uh, dr sk sharma sahab and uh, i also extend a thanks to dr sk sharma sahab for accepting our invitation i just talked 15 minutes uh, back to dr sharma sahab and uh, inviting him to be a, become a chief guest thank you very much sir dr sharma sahab is a very dynamic uh, director research of our university and he is basically man of the vision and man of the reform uh, i worked together since the last time with dr sk sharma sahab in the directorate of the research i am also working as pi of one of the icr scheme of aicrp on irrigation water management and in that respect i can say that dr sharma sahab is really a man of vision not in the field of this organic farming and natural farming he is doing lot of activities related to all the aspects of the agriculture and agriculture engineering field in our university thank you very much sir dr sharma sahab for accepting our invitation and and for the chief guest particularly this training program is really uh, it is a dream of not only our university but it is a dream of all the university that under the edges of the idp how we can develop entrepreneurship among the students i would like to point out here that many of our students has done lot of work and narayan lal gujar is one of the example of the cta that he started his own startup and set up this startup not only in india but in japan also in university saddam hussein and many more persons students they are coming forward and they have started their startup in particularly i would like to point out to few more example in uh, rajasthan college of agriculture that under this leadership of dr dilip singh sahab and dr arnab joshi sir many students are coming forward and now uh, dr ss sharma sahab been rca is also doing a lot of efforts that how we can develop entrepreneurship among the students who can work under this particularly on this protected farming and poly house development also i welcome once again i welcome all of you i also welcome dr nepaliya sahab uh, who is uh, always with us and always inspiring us for organizing such type of activities for the students and faculty member thank you very much thanks to all the eminent speakers and all the my colleagues my head of departments and all the faculty members for joining and for motivating students then lot of students have joined i think this uh, more than 236 students have joined this particular webinar i welcome all the students and hope that these three speakers are well known personality in their field in the country as i personally known to him 
and their deliberations will certainly provide a lot of benefit. That Dr. Chauhan is also going to speak uh, about the government scheme. Dr. Nachiket Kotwaliwale, I know personally, he is man of innovation. He has done a lot of innovation in this Central Institute of Agricultural Engineering in the field of processing and value addition. Uh, Dr. Das, uh, I know Dr. Das, he is also a member of the Sixth Dean's Committee. And uh, Dr. Das has pointed out number of points, number of issues that have raised, number of modifications they is going to propose that under the Sixth Dean Committee, how entrepreneurship can be developed among the students, how the industries people can be collaborate with the institutions, and how they can be benefited by our students and our teaching methods. Welcome, Dr. Das, Dr. Nachiket, and Dr. Chauhan Saab for uh, joining us and hope that your deliberations will really provide a great benefit to our students and faculty members. I once again welcome our chief guest, Dr. S.K. Sarma Saab, for joining us and for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The food processing industry needs to be developed at a faster pace. The agriculture sector has to be expanded to global processed food market through increasing agro industries cluster along villages so that the rural population can get employment related to farming. It is needed to encourage the startups. The investments in food processing of niche agro products to be promoted and fa facilitation of exports of perishable commodities to be increased. Uh, with more than this, uh, the countless and tireless efforts or contributions of our chief guest, Dr. S. K. Sharma, sir, towards organic uh, food production and popularization is innumerous. He is the man of distinct vision, an ideal of knowledge, and experience and inspiration to all of us. I once again welcome, sir, Dr. S. K. Sharma, sir, Director, Directorate of Research, for your inaugural address. Very good morning to all. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be the part of this uh, very important uh, webinar on the food processing and value addition. And uh, this uh, webinar is a very timely taken step uh, because it is dealing with the innovations, opportunities and government schemes in the value addition sector. At the outset, I extend my hearty gratitude to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Narendra Singh Rathod Saab. And uh, many times our Honorable Vice Chancellor has made this particular topic uh, in the focus, not only at the farmers level and into the, our teaching syllabus or students level, but uh, at national and international level. And uh, even uh, since last two and a half years, uh, many important milestones in the food processing and value addition, either in terms of the technology development <laughs> or suggesting the measures to the NABAD or to the our state government as a policy measures or uh, making some new innovative steps at the university level so that we can enhance the uh, food processing as well as value addition value in uh, our state of Rajasthan in the whole country. Uh, I uh, really extend my uh, hearty welcome to our uh, Dean CTI, uh, Dr. P.K. Singhji, our eminent expert, Director uh, CPET, Dr. Nachiket sir, our uh, Dr. Sanjay uh, Das sir, Dean uh, CAET OUT Bhuneshwar, Dr. P. N. Chauhan sir from uh, JU Junagadh, and Dr. N. K. Jain sir, uh, Dean uh, our College of Dairy and Food Technology, and Dr. S. K. Jain sir, Head uh, Processing and Food Engineering CTI. And all co organizing secretaries, uh, Dr. Vikramaditya and Dr. Champao Sav, and all student coordinators, and uh, Dr. Nikita Vadavan for organizing this very excellent and timely uh, webinar on very important topic. At this uh, moment, I would like to mention that uh, our Indian economy is mainly based on the agriculture, and uh, we have been all feeling that uh, uh, our three sectors either it may be agriculture, it may be our uh, manufacturing and service sectors, they are contributing to the total economy of the country. And since last two years, there have been the call by our prime ministers to make our Indian economy 
to be the five trillion economy and in this uh, the role of agriculture has been emphasized and you all know that uh, looking to this importance of the agriculture and within the agriculture it is the food processing and value addition which has been tagged by the our uh, union cabinet by making a provision of 60000 crores for the food processing industry as well as so many schemes in this sector because so far in our country uh, when we talk about the agriculture and allied sectors there is primary processing secondary processing and tertiary processing but at the international level uh, uh, there are a lot of opportunities for our country not only in the uh, primary but secondary and tertiary sectors in when we talk about uh, a kind of the strength weakness opportunities and threats in the food processing and uh, value addition sector at our country level then definitely uh, there are a lot of opportunities are available because we have the diverse agroclimatic conditions and presently more than 2.25 lakh crores of uh, the rupees are contributed from the uh, this food processing industry in the agriculture sector and within the agriculture sector the contribution of food processing industry is not more than 10 to 12 percent and here it is the stake and opportunities are lying that we can increase this particular contribution in the agriculture sector up to 25 percent in the next 10 years so there are a lot of opportunities are existing before uh, our young youngsters because india is a country of our uh, youth and where more than 50 crore of the youth population between 25 years to 49 years is there and every day we are uh, we all observe that uh, number of uh, youths when the survey indicate that they are not interested in joining the agriculture because there are two very important things that agriculture uh, job is uh, not lucrative in terms of the mechanization and secondly in terms of the income so how to enhance the mechanization and how to enhance the income from the agriculture sector definitely it is important and it has been recognized that out of uh, total income of the farmers per household that is around the 1.22 lakh in our country 40 percent of the income is still contributed from the agriculture labor work so there is a need of to enhance the income from the agriculture sector which contributes only 36 percent to the total income of a farm household in the country and it has been observed that if we put right emphasis on the food processing and value addition in our country this income from 36 percent it can be increased more than 50 percent so here uh, there are a lot of uh, opportunities and government schemes are available we can see that uh, as talked by our uh, uh, dean dr pk singhji that uh, our College of Technology Engineering is having very important centrally sponsored scheme that is the PM formalization of micro food processing enterprise scheme at our CTI where uh, the, all the important aspects of the technical and business backstopping is being done by our CTI and uh, they are contributing very important step, step at the national target of 2 lakh micro food processing enterprises to be established in our country. So definitely there are a lot of opportunities that are available, but uh, still uh, the kind of the environment which is visible in our uh, rural areas that need a kind of the particular technical backstopping so that we can enhance the abilities of our young students. We can enhance the uh, technical knowledge of our progressive farmers. We can enhance the skill and experiential learning of our farmers. That is the need of the hour. In Rajasthan also like uh, throughout the country under this scheme, one district, one product program is being launched and with the help of the NABAD, our university is, is also working in this direction. I would like to mention to all the participants that is still even uh, our uh, young scientists from the universities, from the even ICR, even, even from KVKs, they are not formally apprised very well towards the uh, oper operational, uh, op operational apprendi of the all schemes which is very important because we are having the technical knowledge, we have the good processing facilities. But how these schemes are operating, what is the capital subsidy and how a particular plant would be launched and implemented at the rural area level, whether it is FPO based or it is SSG based or individual based, what is the capital investment? So to total food processing plan uh, as a business plan need to be managed in the rural areas. For example, in our southern Rajasthan, Many farmers, progressive farmers, even industrial people are now coming that we want to establish 1000 ton capacity of maize processing plant in the Udaipur and the Banswada. 
but still uh, uh, there are uh, kind of the constraints available that it requires the huge investment but there are lot of capital subsidies are available uh, which can be metalized even we are talking with the district collectors in the both the districts at the udaipur and the banswada but still the whole maize uh, grain is going to either gujarat or to the bombay for the processing purpose and it also incurs the lot of cost so product uh, which is uh, produced from this particular uh, maize uh, which becomes costly uh, for the people uh, but at the same time they are not getting the higher income this region so these kind of the things should be taken into consideration by our young friends at the same time there are a lot of opportunities that has been given under the uh, our uh, prime uh, prime minister's kisan sampada yojana so it indicates that a good ecosystem environment is created at the national level now for the promotion of the food processing and value addition in our country and uh, our target is that at least uh, the food processing industry at the primary level in all rural areas must be established as the panchayat level so that our farmers income can be increased at least from 10 to 20 percent by taking up all these activities but for this purpose because uh, it requires the lot of the business activities and uh, uh, our farmers must be made aware about the technical backstopping in all these schemes. Similarly, whenever we talk about the processing of the milk industry, then uh, processing of the our uh, in Rajasthan, the orange as well as this uh, custard apple, then uh, even papaya, then uh, uh, maize and soybean. They are the important crops, even minor forest produce, they are important crops where we are now thinking of the secondary processing so that those farmers who will join all these activities in the region definitely uh, their income will boost up so this particular webinar today is on very important topic and uh, there are many issues which will be dealt by our eminent experts who are dealing at the national level a lot of innovations are there in the icr even uh, cfate and our uh, different saus at the national level where number of innovations have been there and uh, within the soybean as we feel that more than 75 products are processed products are available in the market so it is also a competition cut industry where if somebody has to survive they have to be technically upgraded continuously because processing technology is also continuously changing in the market so to be as uh, for the better survival in the processing industry there is a need of uh, technical upgradation always uh, besides the networking and the marketing opportunities so this particular webinar definitely will enhance our technical capacity our young students uh, those participants who have joined this particular webinar scientific advancement because our both uh, all three experts are from the uh, national organizations a lot of development has been taken place and very uh, another important part of this webinar is that uh, uh, the organizers has chosen the important government schemes. More than 15 schemes are operating at the national level in the food processing and value addition. And I think uh, uh, very less knowledge is available to our students and participants, even progressive farmers, though continuously at the district level, at the state government level. Even Rajasthan government has announced food processing policy in the 2019 and all deputy directors it is under the agriculture marketing board they are sensitizing to the our farmers for taking up such uh, small micro scale level enterprises so that uh, they can also be uh, self-employed and uh, at the same time they can provide the job to the other farmers this will definitely also help into the enhancing the employment opportunities in the rural areas because uh, it is said that out of total persons employed in the agriculture, only 10 to 11 percent are employed into the agro processing industries. So there is a need to give a lot of emphasis in this industry. And uh, uh, like we should take the advantage of all schemes like uh, uh, Stand Up India, Startup India, Mudra, then PM EGP, PM Formalization Schemes, and PM SV Nidhi, which are uh, many times they appear into the newspapers, but their classic uh, specifications should be made aware to our all participants so that when they will uh, read and they will learn about the basic aspects, they will motivate other farmers, other industries, their family members, so that everybody can take the advantage and we all can contribute towards the uh, a, a kind of the dream that uh, in which the at international level it is said that in our country 
the contribution of food processing and evaluation is less than 10 percent but we uh, with such kind of the sensitization definitely uh, we assume that uh, our all young friends and participants and students will take more such kind of the industries by better technical upgradation by better taking better support of the government schemes they can set up their own industries so that we can enhance the international value of our country we can enhance our export value also at the international level and at the same time it is a good news for all of us also that already government of india has uh, allowed 100 percent fdi under food processing and agro uh, processing uh, in our country so definitely it will also help in taking the new technologies to our country i extend very hearty thanks to the doctor uh, pk singh saab dean cti and extend my hearty gratitude to Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Narendra Singhji Rathod sir for providing me this opportunity to be the part of uh, this important national webinar and sharing some of my views related to this topic. Uh, once again, thank you very much to all organizers. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your enlightening words. I now take uh, the opportunity to introduce our eminent speaker, Dr. Nachiket Kotwali Wale he is presently the director of ICR Central Institute of Post Harvest Engineering and Technology, Ludhiana, and responsible to lead research and development in the area of post harvest engineering and value addition technologies appropriate to agriculture production catchments and agro processing industries in order to minimize the post harvest losses and empower the rural community with additional income. His major areas of professional interest are design of agro processing machinery, development of agriculture produce value chain, automation in agriculture commodity supply chain, non-destructive quality evaluation of foods, machine vision applications in agriculture, instrumentation for quality and safety in agro processing, including storage and minimal housing. His professional accomplishments uh, acclimat Men's are publication of 15 books or and proceedings and 75 publications, including research papers and popular articles and several technical lectures and presentation. He has been contributing in policy development in the area of agriculture and food processing to government of India, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab and Haryana and has also contributed in some of the working groups at national level led by ICR, Niti Aayog, etc. I welcome, sir, for your deliberation on innovations in food processing. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. okay. Okay, okay. So that is the first thing normally you do on online. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Honorable Dr. Sharma, Director of Research, uh, Dr. P. K. Singh, Dean CTA, uh, Dr. Sanjay Jain, Dr. N. K. Jain, I can see uh, my fellow speakers, Dr. Das and Dr. P. M. Johan. Uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, it is uh, for me, it is like homecoming uh, and uh, talking to people of uh, CTA. Uh, students, uh, as I see, there are around 240 uh, plus people in the audience. Uh, so, good morning to everybody. And uh, if you allow me to share my screen, uh, I will start my presentation. So, by the time. Uh, you are the presenter. Uh, beg your pardon. Uh, no, it is not permitted. It is it is not permitted to share my screen. Uh, you may have to make me presenter. presenter then only. Yeah, you may have to make me presenter. Yes. Now now I now I can do it. Uh, Okay. Uh, now, can you see my screen? Whole screen. 
sir uh, dr jain please respond. now now it is there sir sir there sir okay yes yeah there there might and i am outside uh, my office uh, so and that's why you may probably see fssci logo in backdrop i am in meeting with fssci anyway uh, talking about the engineering the path of prosperity through post harvest processing uh, when uh, uh, dr sharma started the issue of uh, uh, entrepreneurship now in entrepreneurship there are uh, two major issues uh, uh, like uh, there are many people who are going for startups and uh, for startup to be called startup one of the major issue is innovation that the idea should be something new idea should be scalable and then there are many other issues also so i will be talking a little bit on uh, some of the cutting edge technologies uh, which uh, through which i would like to generate some ideas into you and uh, definitely when we say innovation uh, so whatever i am saying if you are strictly following within the boundaries of that then it is not innovation. you will have to go beyond the boundary uh, that i am showing you uh, but uh, at present what i am doing is i am showing you to what extent the boundaries can be extended uh, major issues vis a vis engineering intervention <clears throat> especially in the sector of post harvest technology uh, we have uh, three major types of challenges one is technological challenge another is society and uh, third is economic uh, i have listed them in uh, detail in the coming slides uh, so coming to one is technological challenges do we have the technology do we have an appropriate technology suitable for indian conditions resource quality do we have appropriate resources do we have uh, hardware do we have the material itself uh, of the appropriate quality uh, many times uh, if with uh, people especially in fruits and vegetables if you discuss with people they will say that even after huge taxes it is uh, easier for them or it is beneficial for them to import some of the goods from outside rather than using the indian uh, product so the resource quality and when i say resource quality i also mean the human resource quality are our human resource trained enough are our human resource skilled enough to address to these issues address to the issues of new technology and then ultimately everything whenever you are talking of entrepreneurship everything boils down to economics is it economically viable is it beneficial economically then only people will take it uh situational challenges some of the thing we talk uh, we have uh, in general small land holding and the farmers have limited uh, purchase power of the challenge and limited availability and labor uh, whatever you say electrical power diesel power and everything uh, it is not available in abundance and at times even if if you are ready to pay uh, you don't get same thing about skilled labor you should remember uh, the major contributors to indian economy or gdp are service so it is very uh, on the economic terms it is very easy to understand that that's uh, the sector which is contributing more to gdp will be ready to pay more and the labor labors will shift towards that sector so that's why you see many labors are shifting towards construction towards any other other types of jobs because it is paying and first people who will move are good skilled people so that's why uh, there is a dearth of uh, skilled labor available in the uh, agriculture and allied sector then treasury in post and pre and uh, post harvest operation that is also another challenge uh, many people they don't want to work like uh, their earlier generation used to work there are huge post harvest losses i will uh, deliberate a little bit more on that but at present i would like to tell you that the value of the loss at national level is around 1 lakh crore per year that is huge uh, then uh, people need year round employment agriculture and food uh, uh, food in general they have been a 
uh, season. So there would be employment at the time of sowing, there would be employment at the time of harvest, there would be employment uh, even if the food industry is there, they give employment only during the processing of uh, say mangoes or, the, or some other commodities. Employment is not year round, it is not assured and that causes a problem. And then profitability of agriculture and allied businesses, uh, that, that is also very big limitation because of the limited bargain power of producers and farmers. And then every now and then environmental issues are cropping up. So, so these are some of the challenges. If I continue with the challenges, then uh, burgeoning uh, environmental and biological issues. Uh, we have seen that uh, issues like pandemic, issues like locust, issues like uh, some kind of viruses. Uh, th these are cropping up every now and then. Climate change has become a major issue and uh, we, we cannot uh, just ignore it. Uh, cost of uh, mechanism, and I, I, I already talked about it. Uh, then uh, market is opening. Uh, international market is open and uh, that's why it becomes very difficult. Rather than producing something in India, it is easier to import it from some other country like China or, or Bangladesh or, or some other country uh, where uh, uh, things are much cheaper and uh, our requirements are fulfilled. Then resource resources uh, in, the, in the ambience of uh, research and uh, education, uh, we know that uh, these resources are not uh, unlimited and uh, they are dwindling and a lot of challenge uh, is there to uh, get research resources. Uh, coming to cloth and waste, uh, this is this is uh, now I am almost every seminar, wherever I talk, I talk about this because this is substantially huge. Uh, mammoth uh, losses are taking place. I already told you that the value of loss is somewhere around one lakh crore per year. And there are two types of losses. And this one lakh crore per year, I am talking of only quantitative loss. Uh, I'm not talking of the wastage. So loss is one side, wastage is another side. Loss is inadvertent, but can be prevented. It's deliberate and can be prevented by changing of mindset only. So quantitative losses are there. And so these quantitative losses, uh, I am not talking much on it yet, but uh, nevertheless, we should acknowledge that they are there. Uh, with the loss of food, uh, internationally, the FAO has estimated that in 30 to 50 percent of the food material is lost or wasted. Loss and waste, both things. Uh, that is uh, because of uh, ignorance, that could be because of inappropriate technology. Uh, that could be because of uh, negligence. So the value of uh, amount of quantity is around two material. Uh, it's uh, wasted. And what is the what is more that not only we are losing this much quantity of uh, material, but we are also losing the energy that went into production. We are also losing the water that went into production. An estimate is that the total loss uh, uh, leads to loss of water. That is, which is around 16 times the annual water discharge of river Satluj. Now, since I am at present in Punjab, so I'm, I'm taking uh, Satluj river. But uh, if you talk of uh, river Narmada, that then it is somewhere around seven to eight times of annual water. Uh, that is flowing through Narmada. So eight years of Narmada discharge we are losing just because and that much water was given to the uh, crop and that crop was lost. Uh, this is also uh, causing uh, the uneaten food. Uh, this is also causing uh, 1.4 billion hectares of land occupation. Uh, and then carbon footprint is somewhere around 3.3 gigatons of carbon dioxide. And then there is a lot of methane emission. And this methane emission causes 25 times more harmful to the ozone layer 
then the carbon dioxide emission that we are having. And on the right, if you see the picture, you see the losses in production catchment itself, in the area itself, there are percent of storage losses, packing losses, and the same talk. Uh, in the Indian uh, context, uh, CIFET conducted a uh, survey during 2012-13, and uh, another survey is conducted by NABARD, the present, uh, not come here. And uh, this is uh, the outcome of that survey, where we found out that the value of losses for different kinds of commodity, how much is the loss value. Uh, in this, I can tell you that the minimum is uh, in the in of milk, and maximum in, is in case of fruits and vegetables. Uh, so the value comes out around one lakh rupees per year. One lakh rupees per year. And my personal estimate is the value of the wastage is per public. So the, the food that we are leaving in our plates, the food that we are wasting and in parties and in different uh, occasions, uh, all of that, uh, the food that comes to our house, is, uh, remains uneaten and then thrown away, uh, that all might be cost, costing around 2 lakh crore rupees per year. Uh, at the same time, with talent, we have certain constraints of uh, we don't have right quality of uh, for processing. Uh, we have seasonal excesses and seasonal scarcities, and thereby that's why the price fluctuation is huge. Then taxing, I will leave it at present. Uh, and complicated administrative and uh, for opening of uh, industries and all. Although there are uh, government claims that there are uh, uh, new initiatives, single window policy, but still things are not uh, so easy. Uh, food laws are there, they are changing, they, we are getting influenced by the Western world and uh, food laws get changed uh, very frequently. Very weak interface between institution and stakeholder. This is a matter of alarming, actually. Uh, the stakeholders, the food processing industries, most of the time, they want ready-made solutions. And uh, if research is to be conducted, then ready-made solutions are not always available. And then uh, indifference for quality. This, this is another issue that uh, the Indian consumers uh, primary uh, uh, goal is towards the price, the value, uh, not value, but price only. And by the, uh, if somebody is giving quality, then it is not uh, given any premium. Even in government sector, uh, if uh, some material is sold at, uh, say, rice, if it is uh, supplied to government sector at 14% moisture content, it's okay. If it is 15, then 1% cut would be there. But if the farmer gives it at 13%, he doesn't get anything. So, because of this, uh, this, this kind of things lead to malpractices also. Uh, so, what is required? Research and academic impetus is required for modernized, modern mechanization, but appropriate mechanization. Automation, data science, uh, then robust technologies and material science and right scaling. See, so many uh, at very uh, large scale. Uh, the scale of processing is very high. On the other hand, many times people say that we want very small scale technology. But at small scale, the technology may not be economically viable. So right scaling is what an engineer should al uh, always uh, attempt rather than just following blindly following the Western uh, levels of technologies or the requirement of uh, the consumer. Uh, yes, uh, requirement of our stakeholders is paramount. But at times, these requirements are not uh, very justifiable, and we need to educate them. Uh, then resource conservation and secondary agriculture uh, is required. Uh, secondary agriculture, here I mean uh, the processing activities leading to use of uh, uh, waste material. I, I should not say waste material or surplus material, or, or I should say the uh, byproducts byproducts of farms, byproducts of process industry. And that will also help in uh, making the uh, pollution-free environment. Uh, food safety and quality, uh, very rapid and field-worthy kits are required. Uh, then 
realize one thing that whenever you are going to increase the scale of any processing whenever you are going to use machines you would always need energy and then uh, requirement of energy packs especially the mobile energy packs uh, battery lot of work is being carried out and lot of uh, uh, potential is there uh, so even being agriculture engineer we can think of uh, how we can provide uh, mobile battery packs or mobile energy kits i should call uh, second generation biofuels uh, is also another uh, area where you can think of along with processing then uh, data generation and basic research for policy decision this is imperative unless we have it uh, everything our own data is now value and unless we have that valuable asset uh, we will be lagging behind and then appropriately appropriate curricula and hands on practical training facilities especially since i am talking to the audience of college uh, i i would definitely uh, encourage everybody to uh, engage yourself lots of uh, let me go a little beyond uh, of the topic and let me pay my homage to uh, professor aran who was my teacher at uh, cta during uh, my uh, mtech and he was teaching computer and uh, one of the most wonderful thing he did is that use this computer at your wish at your time whatever you want to do just don't physically break it so that type of attitude is required among all teachers and especially in in the case of uh, the high ended uh, uh, knowledge and cutting edge technologies Uh, where there would be uh, uh, very much reluctance among the students and awe among the students, and that has to be broken. Uh, I'm I'm very uh, sanguine that this type of uh, facility use and this type of freedom would be provided to all the students, and that lead to a lot of uh, innovative ideas and innovative ideas getting converted into form of uh, physical things. Uh, at the same time, when I talked of challenges, I talked of impediments, uh, but there are positives. We, we as India, has very broad crop base, uh, uh, but at times it becomes challenge also because variety of things are there. So one technology at times cannot be sufficient for even all the varieties of single crop. Uh, but that is one of our uh, advantages. We have a very good framework of mechanization in place. Uh, we have large market that that is one of the reasons where that we are not exporting much because our own market is large enough to consume everything uh, now the new consumers are coming who are nutritional savvy they are ready to experiment with their foods and uh, they are ready to uh, pay more for uh, good material we have excellent network of mobile phones Uh, which can come handy in uh, control of technology, which can come handy in implementation of technology, which can come handy in uh, uh, advertisements and uh, promotion of your product. So, so many things, uh, and you have seen that uh, the Indians, uh, whether it is rural or urban, all of them, they have uh, taken this mobile uh, technology very. very quickly and uh, they are using it a lot of advantage so let us not think that people will not uh, take my technology if it is uh, too uh, too ahead of time you no technology is much ahead of time and uh, every technology will uh, will be if uh, it is useful it will uh, people will take it at whatever cost is it available uh, another positives is that we have a wide spectrum of technologies available already with icr with csir with ministry of food processing industries and with academic institutes like cdae and so many others uh, so general approach uh, towards the solution is the appropriate mechanization on farm processing you see rem remember one thing that quality cannot be quality can be retained quality is uh, to be retained at the beginning itself and that is why on farm primary processing has to be given a lot of uh, um, uh, impetus and a lot of encouragement and uh, we are expecting that uh, the young generation will bring out very innovative technologies for retention of quality at the farm itself 
then comes on and off form uh, level uh, uh, value addition on form value addition or off form value addition uh, every small small step is it adds value value could be time value value could be space value value could be uh, some other kind of uh, emotional value also so different types of products uh, when uh, indian diaspora uh, uh, in abroad when they are searching for certain kind of papad or certain kind of buddy or some certain ethnic foods so that is also a value addition so that is a, a emotional value uh, that is being added to it and at the same time place value is added something which is made in india and when it uh, goes to abroad so so those type of value addition can be done uh, supporting infrastructure i am sure dr chauhan will talk much but a uh, lot of infrastructure is required physical infrastructure and human infrastructure is required and government schemes are there to support this uh, type of things and uh, skill development skill development at every level skill development at the artisan level at the manufacturer or fabricators level at managers level and at the level of top management also is is essential uh now i will very quickly go through some of the new technologies and uh, giving you idea of uh, innovative automation with brilliance uh, so so my tagline says that innovative automation with brilliance uh automation has to be done everybody wants things to be done automatically we don't have to do anything but it has to be with innovative idea innovation pays and it has to be intelligent or it has to be brilliant let us go one step beyond it that it's not only artificial intelligence it's not only otherwise it uh, general intelligence uh it has to be brilliant okay uh so post harvest quality management per se uh, there are two factors which affect one is biotic and another is abiotic uh, as an engineer we are more uh, interested into abiotic factors because they are the factors which we understand physical chemical and physiological factors and uh, they can be controlled by us we can generate technologies to control any or every every factor uh, among these uh so uh, let us start with uh, protection of uh, not only grain but even all other uh, food commodity i should say food protection and variety of technologies are available we are talking of products which are natural we uh, we we want to have technologies uh, which are uh, non chemical more or less because Uh, what happens is in case of chemicals that there are residual effects and sometimes they are not uh, accepted by uh, the consumer so we are more interested in physical treatment or mechanical treatment uh, yes biological control and uh, chemical control these are also some of the uh, alternatives and uh, then uh, joining everything is biotechnological control uh, so uh, there are in uh, physical if we talk there are thermal technologies and there are non thermal technologies uh, i will little bit elaborate them in slightly uh, later slides so we have seen uh, storage structures like all of these uh, starting with uh, somewhere in 1960s uh, the coal tar drums were propagated as a storage structures because otherwise the storage was uh, that was the first uh, metal storage structure i should say introduced in india then came some kind of uh, innovative aerate aerated storage structure but nevertheless at a large scale uh, the bag uh, storage structure itself was uh, uh, promoted and it was uh, accepted and to support to that uh, covered uh, storage structure cap storage structure that is cover and plinth kind of uh, storage structure which is shown on the bottom right so that also is prevailing still prevailing for uh, short term storage uh, at the same time uh, the metallic bins of variety of uh, size uh, they were introduced by uh, government agencies and uh, many private agencies and these type of things are not very uncommon now uh, but at uh, but uh, still uh, large uh, quantity uh, means uh, the sizes of 5 ton 10 ton 15 ton are not very popular uh, rather it is a very small type 
or a very large type of uh, storage structures now these large type of uh, storage structures which are bulk storage structures which are called silos uh, they they are equipped with uh, different kinds of uh, sensors and these type of uh, sensors are hanging inside at and giving uh, giving a grid of uh, making a grid of uh, sense uh, sensors and giving information on uh, the heat and uh, moisture condition of the grains uh, different techniques which have been used uh, for uh, disinfection before the uh, this type of bulk storage is now most common is open sun drying uh, moisture is uh, the most uh, harmful uh, thing uh, for any kind of uh, product uh, any kind of food product i would say uh in case of uh, fruits and vegetables also uh, moisture is uh, one of the detrimental thing but you want to retain it in case of uh, food grains uh, moisture you want to remove it so these which are very uh, important in case of any kind of uh, decay of any material is uh, moisture air and uh, temperature so these three things if any one of them is controlled then the shelf life increases and uh, uh, then uh, microwaves or radio frequency infrared ohmic heating oscillating magnetic field these are some of the technologies which are being used for uh, controlling moisture of the grains before storage uh, these are some uh, uh, other storage structures which are uh, uh, becoming common and they are called silo bags they, they can be uh, simply kept inside the field and uh, one acre can store around 2000 tons of grain in these kind of silos although they are slightly expensive but uh, nevertheless the technology is there an alternate to that technology is uh, these type of uh, hermit storage structures and this is an experiment picture of experiment that was conducted by us at uh, bhopal and uh, this is a vacuum assisted hermetic uh, storage structure in which is wheat in uh, open to elements within these bags and uh, for almost 8 months uh, that 8 months included uh, even the monsoon season and for 8 months there was absolutely no damage to grain absolutely no activity of insect or no fungus or nothing so these type of uh, technologies have been uh, explored and uh, at a research level they have been uh, there uh, although compared to doing nothing they are expensive but uh, nevertheless they are able to retain the quantity and quality so they are able to restrict the qualitative losses as well as quant quantitative losses uh, so that uh, the one thing which i showed you earlier that can be given sensor assisted uh, then comes uh, the technologies which are uh, used for uh, before storage or even after storage so i am not going to go into details of how microwave works or how radio frequency work uh, i will directly come to the technology that have been developed so this is a technology for uh, uh, microwave based uh, disinfection of grains uh, you you see nowadays many people they buy uh, basmati rice or even wheat a particular premium brand of wheat and uh, it's in a good packet and uh, good uh, value is paid for their is procurement but when you open the packet you find that there are insects inside now the uh, producer or the packer who has uh, packed the material these grains intentionally uh, these uh, insect in intentionally in that what happens that on the grain itself there are a lot of larva and eggs and over the period of 3 to 4 months they all hatch and when you open the bag uh, this thing is there so we have developed uh, a, a technology of microwave uh, disinfection so before bagging the grain is uh, given slight moisture moisture is adjusted some pre conditioning is done microwave exposure is given then moisture is removed and insect uh, dead insect insects die so dead insect uh, separation takes place and then uh, collection and then bagging so if uh, this way things are done and if uh, 
there is no cross inf uh, in infection, then the grain could be stored up to 12 months. So now 12 months is the period till, we, till what we conducted the experiment. But uh, ideally, it should be able to store for much longer period uh, without uh, any kind of insect infestation. Another kind of uh, heating is infrared heating. Uh, this is a new generation research area and a lot of good work has been done at uh, CIA and uh, even at uh, NIT Raurkela. Uh, they have done a lot of good work in, in uh, infrared heating and uh, in case of uh, uh, microwave and also uh, radio frequency uh, areas. Ohmic heating is, uh, is a technique. So these are some of the techniques which I am giving you an idea. Those especially who are in the field of, uh, who are in the search of topics for their PhD work. So these are some of the topics. So ohmic heating is, uh, is a heating where uh, heat is generated because flow of current and uh, resistance that is offered by the material. Uh, so so uh, this, this uh, ohmic heating, this causes uh, 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 heat heat generation is internal, so the distribution of heat is uh, quite uh, quite good. Other than that, there is a pulse electric heating also. I okay, uh, I didn't have a slide for that. So pulse electric heating also is there, which causes cell cell rupture, and uh, not only it uh, helps in disinfection. But also there are a lot of other advantages like uh, extraction of color or extraction of uh, some kind of oils that becomes very easy. A new area of uh, research, uh, non-thermal uh, processing is also coming up. And if you have paid attention recently, Nifton Tanjore, they, they uh, in, inaugurated one uh, new lab on non-thermal processing of uh, foods. And under this comes uh, cold plasma, irradiation, and ozonation. And uh, many PhD work, uh, PhD level research uh, are being done. Uh, I think uh, uh, AU Anand has a facility of irradiation and many other uh, organization. Ozonation, even at CIFEC, we have uh, ozonation facility. In CIA, there is a ozonation facility. So these are some of the new uh, areas uh, which are being explored for uh, processing of uh, foods, different kinds of foods. Uh, this is a kind of a chain I am uh, trying to present, uh, especially in horticultural crops. Uh, you see, India doesn't process much horticulture, and many places you will see people claiming that uh, in India processing is only one to two percent. But frankly speaking, it is not one to two percent. One to two percent is the processing of horticulture crops for export. Uh, but otherwise, and that is also processing tertiary processing. Otherwise, if you talk uh, handling, cleaning, grading, sorting, transportation. All these things are nothing but some kind of processing process unit operations. So that way, everything that comes from farmer and goes up to a consumer, everything is processed. 100% processing takes place. Uh, only if perception is what do you define as process. Uh, but uh, every place, every unit operation, there is a uh, plethora of uh, technologies available and there is a lot of scope of innovating so that the handling becomes minimum in one go you can do a lot of things in one go you can do cleaning green sorting uh, and other observations packing everything you, uh, can be done in one go uh, transportation different types of transportation bags transportation cushioning material transportation baskets so a lot of uh, innovations are taking place uh, remember that these baskets which are used for transportation one way they are going full and come, they're coming back empty. So a lot of space is being utilized. There are some collapsible baskets, but which are not becoming very popular or, or which are not uh, very reliable. Uh, there is a scope of uh, people doing uh, research on that. Uh, during transportation, monitoring of the environment is another issue. During transportation, uh, you need exact uh, conditions under which uh, the product can be retained or product quality can be retained. 
before transportation if you can uh, grade and sort the material then the uh, transportation and storage load reduces so this this complete chain of uh, uh, fresh uh, product handling uh, there is a lot of uh, scope of uh, automation into that and controls uh, radio frequency identification this is a another uh, area when i said that consumer is becoming quality savvy consumer is becoming uh, organic or natural farming savvy then they want that the product that they are eating should be certified and it should be traceable so radio frequency uh, tagging uh, this comes uh, handy uh, and through this and uh, through the cloud computing uh, you can uh, definitely uh, trace the material uh, from uh, back up to even uh, farmers level and then you can find at what type of treatments were given how many sprays of insecticides were done what were the different types of fertilizers given to the field what are the conditions of nearby fields so plethora of data can be generated and then can be provided to the consumer and appropriate uh, uh, information or decision uh, support can be given to the consumer uh, sensing and separation uh, is uh, one of the areas uh, that starts just after collection and uh, icr institutes have worked on some uh, color sorting uh, equipment uh, so one of them is from cia another from cipet and is a very classic uh, uh, color sorter which is used in rice mills and some other industry also we are yet to develop a completely indigenous uh, color sorter machine except for these two which are for fruits and vegetables but for grains uh, anything that is 100% indian is uh, yet to be developed and this is a challenge for all of you uh, then comes uh, sensing uh, or viewing uh, inside the product uh, or uh, radiation based techniques so on the right side uh, on the left side top uh, this you see a, a, an instrument or equipment developed for x ray imaging of uh, the different crops on the bottom we have this uh, infra uh, sorry microwave processing unit on the right side uh, we have also explored uh, computer tomography magnetic resonance imaging emission imaging infrared imaging so lots of technologies are there uh, we have to find which is the most appropriate for which crop which commodity and for which purpose and then develop the hardware that is that is the challenge actually uh this uh, this is another work of us we we did some uh, kind of uh, electronic nose which we can say not per se exactly electronic nose but gas sensing based quality determination of uh, mushrooms how fresh are the mushrooms uh, using this type of uh, device uh, we can uh, find out uh, image based uh, maturity detection image based uh, uh, detection of the mushrooms how old is the mushroom so for that also we have developed some image based uh, uh, technology uh, then hyperspectral imaging is another uh, level of uh, imaging wherein you can generate protocols uh, you can generate certain signatures of a commodity uh, to find out uh, different kinds of defects or different kinds of positive things and this is also called chemical image certain chemicals like proteins or lipids or moisture or, or certain other things how they are distributed everything can be determined using this type of uh, technologies and then based on that you can generate handheld devices or different kind of devices for uh, finding rapid uh, quality uh, or safety even this has been used even on the right side as you can see we can find out uh, damage on cucumbers much ahead of the uh time then the same uh, hyperspectral imaging has been used for detection of aflatoxins this is the same kind of uh, feature aflatoxins in maize aflatoxins in groundnut uh, and then even paddy and all other many varieties they have different fungal growths and aflatoxins so same thing can be detected non destructively and without touching non invasively uh, using hyperspectral imaging uh, things thermal imaging uh, 
for modeling and control of cooling or baking or even for uh, finding uh, uh, even for finding different uh, grains uh, uh, or insect within the grain uh, for that also uh, thermal imaging can be used uh, this is another experiment or academic work we have on uh, use of uh, sound for detection of insect density within a grain storage so based on the sound that is uh, you can hear and then processing of that sound you can find if at all there are insects and if they are then what is the insect density uh, so so this is one and then robotics uh, definitely is a new area uh, to replace uh, to some extent the skilled manpower and another area which is coming is cobotics cobotics is kind of a collaborative robotics so some part of it is done by human and some part of it is done by robots uh, and this uh, cobotics uh, multi sensor devices are being used uh, they are specially for low speed applications and uh, then they 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 provide some kind of uh, uh, good uh, support to you and be and uh, but at the same time like they will have a gentle grip if you are handling eggs or if you are handling flowers or if you are handling very tender fruits or vegetables in that case these type of uh, uh, devices can be applied uh, this is a application of drone this is small video that you can see that uh, uh, these are multiple drones uh, being uh, connected to a power device so battery is not required to be carried uh, of course this is not done in india but uh, for uh, harvesting of different fruits and not only harvesting but in the processing domain we are also working the quality of the material so they will define the quality the harvest and sort at the same time so so both the things will be done at the same time uh, so that type of applications uh, we must think of because now you see government of india is giving 100% subsidy on procurement of drone by government organizations that will include uh, all icr institutes and uh, state agriculture universities and it is a good time that state agriculture universities buy uh, some few drones and some of them in the off time can be uh, utilized for these type of applications Uh, another application of drones uh, uh, not drones uh, but robots uh, we are contemplating as miniature robots so these miniature robots can be put inside uh, a grain mass or even within uh, fruits and vegetables and they can they will crawl very uh, easily uh, within the mass and then they will give data and uh, then uh, radio frequencies can be used for charging of these kind of uh, small small devices uh this is a, a this is another application cloud based application for monitoring and control of uh, storage structures especially for fruits and vegetables uh, where uh, the storage cold storages and uh, refrigerated vans and everything they are connected to each other so just take an example that's uh, a truck load of banana starts from trichy and it is uh, intended to go to uh, jammu but uh, because of the weather conditions or because of some other issues uh, suppose the pens uh, find uh, that the banana is now close to ripening and it cannot go up to jammu if it goes to jammu it will be over ripened and cannot be sold somewhere in between it will be diverted to udaipur or or maybe even before that it can be diverted to uh, some hyderabad or some other place Uh, so so that type of uh, decision supports can be taken very easily uh, using cloud computing and sensor based uh, storage and uh, uh, refrigerated vans uh, robotics and iot and blockchain these are the new technology new buzzwords uh, and uh, they are coming out very strongly but they have to be uh, applied uh, wisely Uh, at times people will say that they are replacing our labor and uh, they are not good for that sense but remember that uh, they are replacing the unskilled operations and they are giving a ample opportunity for white collared or blue collared jobs 
and uh, skilled uh, job opportunities to skilled people and then they are creating a lot of opportunities for service sector the service sector whether it is uh, drone based service sector whether it is uh, machine based service sector uh, potential of 3d printing now 3d printing is also another area at present uh, much of academic institutes are working on this that how do we uh, print a personalized food uh, a nutritionist uh, recommends that you should have this much protein this much lipid this much salt not more than this much uh, sugar so how do you design the food and how do you make uh, that food individually available so 3d printing could come as very handy uh, we are looking at at a kind of concept where there is a vending machine uh, and uh, you simply key in your requirements and the vending machine will give you out an idli or a porridge or a dosa or or a pizza or or any kind of uh, material uh, which is uh, fulfilling your functional requirements uh, nutritional dense innovative foods could be there and not only for foods but even for making of structures uh, structures for storage structures for uh, uh, different uh, buildings building structure also uh, so that type of uh, things can be made using 3d printing uh, sensing of food quality artificial biosensing e tongue e nose e mouth e vision you go on and and everything all the human senses uh, they need to be converted into uh, artificial sensing and then they need to be trained appropriately and provided uh, appropriate intelligence to the device and by phone based or android device i am i'm pretty sure that they will get the first uh, uh, entry into the market and acceptance into the consumers uh, this is the same thing explained in the graphic way uh, so we need to address convenience and hygiene we need to address right selling or selling technology has to be at the right scale we need to address robustness especially if we are talking of the high tech uh, then the uh, sensors and technologies imported from outside they sometimes fail in india because of the weather conditions because of the conditions and skills of the labors who are using it so we need to make them uh, robust uh, so that they are fail proof or food proof uh, at the same time they are expensive so they should be uh, versatile they should be able to handle more than one crop more than uh, four five six crops uh, they need to be updatable dynamically that is also required it's not that every three years you you change everything so so that uh, dynamism uh, should be part of uh, technology development process cost effective i started in the beginning itself that cost is one of the major issues agriculture is commerce and commerce means money money means there has to be cost cutting at different places uh, expertise and infrastructure at the same time has to be developed and uh, there are government schemes I'm sure dr chauhan will talk uh, about those government schemes uh, what are the different schemes and what are the different promotional activities of the government and whatever we do prototype multiplication many times we see on uh, social media one or two machines simply are made they look brilliant but at times i have seen that they are not robust they are good for only making that video and uh, they are not getting multiplied also at a later stage <clears throat> uh, so the solution would be as i said small scale is not always good so rather than equipment ownership it could be custom hiring it should be uh, services provider uh, government schemes like uh, small uh, submission on agriculture mechanization or agri infrastructure fund so these are some of the some of the alternatives which are providing funds for uh, custom hiring kind of services uh, quality and appropriate machine uh, not uh, that everything should be made of mild steel we have to see that uh, advanced materials are also used for making this even the structure of the machines uh, sensor and automation in handling uh, I I have talked already. Uh, concern for product quality and food safety. Now it will come. See, making anything at home is different, and making anything at a large scale is different. And maintenance of quality and maintenance of food safety. 
is one of the major thing a value addition to waste remember that any by product that is coming out agriculture or agriculture uh, agro processing industry should be converted in, into high value compound then only it makes sense and then only the profit can be increased empowering the stakeholders everybody needs to be trained uh, this is one of the attempt that the cta has taken that uh, empowering the students and some of the entrepreneurs who are in the audience uh, but this uh, needs to be done at a larger scale and very frequently and ultimately sharing of resources and uh, this is again example of uh, this particular uh, program that uh, the resources available in icr resources available in other agricultural industries uh, they are being used as human resources like me dr das and dr chauhan so we are being used Uh, we have to share. We have to share at some other point when we conduct these programs. We would be using your faculty as our resource person. Uh, with this, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my email address is given here. Uh, you are always uh, welcome to interact with me on this issue. And uh, my presentation in PDF form has been shared with CTA. Anybody who wants that presentation can take it from organizations. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much uh, for your valuable information regarding the queuing theory. Uh, it will, I hope, it will be def, def, it will definitely help all of us. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Thank you, Dr. Nasiket, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, I would like to excuse uh, because I have another meeting to attend physically. No, 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 so, no, no, if, if you uh, if you kindly permit and. Uh, all the best to dr das and uh, uh, also dr chauhan for their lectures thank you very much thank you very much thank you for delivering very nice and very useful lecture sir sir, sir, sir actually nitike sir is having a very important meeting at delhi and uh, uh, morning only he is to visit to delhi, came to delhi uh, that is the reason he is leaving Thank you, special sir. Thank water, you, sir. Special word of thanks to Dr. Nechiket because last time we were here, he didn't screen press me, and very high gratitude for sparing his valuable time. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Thank sir. you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have with us Professor Sanjay K. Das, sir. He has been working in Odisha. University of Agriculture and Technology, Bhubaneswar, in different capacities since 1989, and as Dean, Faculty of Agriculture Engineering, since June 2017. He has also served as Dean Students Welfare of the University during 2018-21. Dr. Dash has handled eight externally funded projects and contributed significantly to teaching, research, and extension in the field of agriculture engineering. He has more than 70 research publications, more than 140 popular articles, seven books with ISBN, and 12 manuals to his credit. He is the chairman of the technology management cell of the university and the director of Krishi Kalinga Innovation Foundation, set up by OUAT. As a member of different state level committees, he has contributed immensely for the development of food processing and farm mechanization sector in the state. He has been a member of uh, many national and state level committees, which include the RAC, QRT, and the PRTs constituted by the ICR for different institutions, universities, and research projects. He has visited countries like Israel, Germany, Netherlands, US, and Canada under different professional assignments. He has received many awards, recognitions for his professional contributions, which include the Samantha. Ch Chandrasekhar Award of Government of Odisha, Fellow of ISA E Commendation Medal, and the Best Teacher Award of OUAT during 2008. I welcome you, sir, for your address, for your deliberations. Thank you so Thank much, you. Sir. Uh, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are perfectly audible, sir. And uh, my slide is also visible, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Visible. Oh, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, so esteemed uh, dr sharma the dean of research of mpuat esteemed deans dr pk singh ji dr nk jain ji 
and Dr. Kotelwale, I do not know whether he's still here or not. Dr. Chauhan, Dr. Nepalia, Jain sir, and all the esteemed teachers of uh, CTA and all the worthy attendees. Uh, I am so grateful to Dr. SK Jain sir and his team for giving me this opportunity to speak on this occasion, not only because I have the opportunity to speak to the students, uh, but also because I will be primarily speaking in an event organized by my alma mater. So that is very, very important for me. Uh, well, when Dr. Nachiket is a speaker in any forum, the next speaker usually has very limited boundary to speak. Um, however, when Dr. emphasized on and so nicely described the innovative products and processes, so I'll be primarily sharing my inputs as they are commonly available around us, but often we do not recognize these opportunities. And keeping in mind that mostly students form the major part of the audience, I'll also fine tune my talk in that direction. Okay, so when we talk about the post harvest management and value addition, as Dr. Nachiket was mentioning, basically we are interested to set up an enterprise. So food processing is not for home consumption, food processing is for marketing, food processing is for entrepreneurship. So remember when the product is going to the market, it has to be in the desired form, in the desirable form of packaging, in the desired quantity, the desirable quality. And at the end, it is also very, very important that it should be sold in the desirable price. Many different types of the products are available in the market, but if we do not meet any of the important parameters, so that is going to fail in the market. And what is the objective of food processing? All of us know we basically are interested to reduce the losses. We are interested to maintain the quality or to supply better quality produce to the consumers, to have a variety of the products and Never forget about the more income, income and employment generation associated with food processing. And when we achieve all these things, also we are trying to solve some of the national challenges of food and nutritional security, increasing in the farm gate prices, increase in the rural income, which is very, very important from the present context of view, more crop and more diversified crops. And ultimately, food processing also helps for the conversion of waste or co-products to wealth. Now, when we talk about processing, let's not forget about the different types of the losses which normally occur for the foods. For example, if we talk about the fruits and vegetables and the grains, it can be loss of moisture, wilting and sibling, loss of carbohydrates, vitamins, proteins, and other essential nutrients and micronutrients, Physical damages can occur through pests, diseases, etc. Quality loss can also be there because of the physiological disorders. There may be fiber development in crops like ginger, in crops like beans. There may be greening of the potatoes. There may be sweetness loss to the peas. There may be sprouting. So like this, many different types of the losses can occur to the perishables and same is also true for the grains. And let's not forget that the crop loss accumulates at every phase of the post harvest value chain. And particularly in the situation like India, it is very, very acute in the early in the supply chain. Losses during the food production chain are at different stages in developing countries and in Western countries. In the Western countries, huge amount of losses occurs on the dining table, on the table. But in our situations, it's primarily the post harvest losses before it really comes to the market. So for that, it is very, very important to understand and identify the strengths and limitations of the capacity of the farmers, infrastructure, market, and so many parameters are there to meet the challenges. So with this much of background, Today, we'll be discussing about some issues related to the post harvest management and value addition, entrepreneurship in durables processing and value addition. And also, we'll be discussing about the perishables processing and value addition, 
put packaging and storage options, some opportunities for the value chain management, and little bit. I understand that uh, Dr. Chauhan will be speaking more on the support system. I will be having only two to three slides on the support system. Well, dear friends, when we talk about the post harvest operations, basically they can be categorized, and Dr. Nachiket also emphasized that processing and value addition and storage and preservation are two important domains of post harvest management. And when we talk about primary processing, secondary processing, and tertiary processing, so they occur at different stages. And at each stage of processing, let us not forget that value is added to the product and employment generation is also there at different stages. So when we're talking about the entrepreneurship development, so you can target any commodity at the initial stage, which can be primary processing, or maybe at secondary stage, collection of the materials from the primary processing centers for further value addition in secondary processing, or maybe collection of the materials from the secondary processing centers for tertiary processing. So this is very, very important to understand and realize the scopes existing for any specific commodity at different stages of the supply chain or a better what could be value chain. For example, I can tell you some of the primary value addition of the grains or the durables can be sorted products, cleaned products, dried products, and there may be also operations like mixing and grinding packaging, which will be adding value, but they can be taken as primary value addition. And secondary value addition can be something like puffing, popping, flaking, extrusion, baking, fermentation. And let's not forget that the raw materials for the secondary value added products are obtained from the primary processing industries. And subsequently, you can also go for other types of products subsequently by blending the secondary value added products like extruded products or so on. Let us talk with some examples how these things really happen and can we think about any role of ours in this chain of primary, secondary or processing or tertiary processing industries. This is a sequence of developments or evolutions of the rice processing industries. All of us know in 1960s we had small handle haulers. In 70s or late 70s, we had modern rice mills, so-called, where we had the rubber roll seller, cone polisher, and other auxiliary equipment. And now the machines which were called modern rice mills in the 80s or till late 90s are called obsolete machines. And now we are having still more sophisticated machines which are known as modern rice mills. And the investments can be starting from 20 lakhs rupees to maybe around 4 crores of rupees only for the equipment. And at the same time, we are also having single pass rice mills. The investment could be around some three to four lakhs rupees for the equipment, or even smaller than that, even up to 1.2 or 1.5 lakhs rupees for the single pass rice mills. Now the basic objectives of these rice milling machines are to prepare the rice for the market. And remember, when we are going for the domestic market or international market, definitely we have to be more specifically concerned about the quality of the materials which are produced from our mills. And same thing when we are talking about the rice mills, we cannot ignore about the different infrastructures which are required for conditioning. Conditioning can be parboiling, conditioning can be curing, and also dried products. And also, when we talk about the secondary value added products, a huge many opportunities are available. And as Dr. Nachiket was mentioning, nowadays the consumer preferences for the foods are changing. With more of family incomes, we are also going to the diversified food consumption habits. So many types of different food products can be obtained from the primary processing or secondary processing of paddy or rice. The list is many, as you can see. So many types of food products can be made available through the different types of the food processing setups or industries. And at the same time, let me tell you, 
that when we talk about the rice as a single crop, so there are many other types of equipment which are also required. Suppose, for example, here I have tried to mention a few like the roasters, like the rolls which are used for the preparation of the flaked rice, like the conditioning units. And when we talk about the rice, we should not forget about the economics of the rice mill and which is incomplete without proper utilization of the rice husk and rice bran. So in that situation, proper utilization of the rice husk and proper utilization of rice bran is also important. So what I wanted to say with these few slides on a case study of rice is that it's not only the preparation of the rice from the paddy, but also several types of other associated industries can be thought of are possible with rice as a single crop. And at the same time, we are also having shortage of equipment manufacturers in a country like India. Let me tell you that equipment manufacturers with good quality of equipment have been a prime concern for all of us. So if you are going for the value added products as an enterprise, that is fine. But at the same time, we can also consider having a setup for the manufacture of the processing equipment, which is also very, very relevant in a country like ours. Similarly, if I talk about the pulse processing, the pulse processing can be done with small single pass pulse mills. The equipment or investment can be starting from 1.5 lakhs to maybe 4 lakhs or to very large capacity pulse mills where the investment will be more than 30 lakhs only for the equipment. Quality is very, very important. And as all of us know that it's not only the machines which decide the quality, it is also the processing parameters. It's also the preconditioning. It is also the curing. It is also proper drying, which are very, very important. And where we stand perfectly fitting into the system because we are qualified engineers. Small dial mills are also available. Like this, I have taken, for example, the dial mill developed by the CFTRI Mysore. The right one is the dial mill developed by CIA Bhopal and the bottom one PKB Akola dal mill. So these types of mills are also available for small scale processing of dals. And if I talk about the investment for a small capacity dal mill, let's say 100 kg per hour. So you can see the total cost of the machine is not too high. And at the same time, if you are going for addition of a dryer or maybe elevator, the total cost of the machine will be around 5 lakhs rupees for a small dial milling unit of 100 kg per hour. But this is not the end of the story. So when I talk about a small capacity dial mill, so mo mostly we primarily think about using human labor for different operations. So if you go for a little bit more mechanization, the cost can be higher. Similarly, if I talk about the enterprise opportunities in oil seed processing, Again, the oils can be processed with different types of presses. Solvent extraction units are also plentifully available in a country like ours. And the cost of the solvent extraction plants can be very, very high. But the recent trend in our country is to have cold pressed oils. And for cold pressing of the oil, several small capacity machines are also being manufactured. And let me tell you that in the last three to five years, the number of the manufacturers for cold pressed oil mills, or which you can say power gun is, they have exponentially increased in different states of the country. So where there is an opportunity, not only for the processing and preparation of the oil, and as well as the utilization of the auxiliary co-products, but at the same time, number of manufacturers, as I mentioned, they're increasing. That means there is also opportunity for entering into the business of fabrication of such type of equipment. And if I talk about the cost of machines, again, for a small capacity oil mill, in 24 hours, if the milling capacity will be three metric tons only. So you can see, it's not a huge amount. The total cost can be close to four to five lakhs in the present scenario. Similarly, when we talk about extraction of oil, or extra preparation of the pulses. So automatically the byproducts need to be properly thought of 
for proper disposal. Otherwise, the economics is at stake. So many different types of value added products can be prepared from the pulses. It can be besan, laddus, cakes, wadi, etc. Papad. And even from the, from the oil seeds, we have opportunities of preparing different types of food and feed materials, extruded products, winning food. And all of us know that suppose, for example, normal oil seeds like mustard will be having around 30 to 35 percent oil. The recovery will be less than 25 percent. So the remaining part of the oil, as well as the proteins, they remain still with the oil cake, which can be better utilized as an ingredient for subsequent preparation of food and feed materials. Maize is another crop of importance where the maize can be converted to corn flour, semolina, cake, kids, starch, glucose, gluten, milk, like this. And popcorn is very, very famous, very, very common for all the young generation. Corn flakes and the value added products from ragi include the pulled grains, powdered ragi, malted ragi, baked product, etc. Now, actually, the recent trend has been to go back to the nutritional crops like ragi and other millets. And now people have started realizing the importance of such type of nutritional crops and the comments like Odisha, Karnataka, and I hope in Rajasthan also, we are emphasizing a lot on the production of such type of millets or nutritional crops. So the crops production can only be remunerative only if the value addition chain is also established for these crops. So that is why it is very, very important that to support the maximization of the production of these crops, the food processing setup also should be optimal. And when I talk about any food processing industry or enterprise, it is also very, very important. The byproducts has to be properly utilized, whether this is the husk and bran from the rice mill or the husk obtained from the pulse milling industries or the polish extracts or the cattle feed or the oil cake, which is obtained from the oil seed processing industries. So there are many opportunities for the preparation of value added products in the form of particle board, in the form of oil from the rice bran, in the form of different types of cutlery items. As you can see here, they have been prepared from husk and silica. Rice or cask is a good source of silica, then gamma original and many essential nutrients. They can be prepared from co-products. I should not use the word waste products because for me, there is nothing in the food industry which can be called waste. So the co-products and byproducts can be properly utilized. So while talking about the food processing industries and we're talking about the enterprise opportunities for the food processing, so there is also good opportunity for entering into a venture of managing the supply chain of the food base. For example, we require transit stores in between the farmer and the consumer in farm pack houses, rural market assemblies, wholesale markets, retailer stores, etc. So if we can manage or intervene into these areas where we have the provision of storing and properly regulating, Dr. Nachiket was emphasizing on a very particular word, if I'm not wrong, that is innovative automation with brilliance. So this type of systems can be integrated into supply chain management. And let's not forget that there is good scope of fabrication or manufacture of the grain storage structures in the supply chain. And Dr. Nachiket was giving good examples of the different types of innovative storage structures which can be integrated into the Indian supply chain of food grains. Manufacture of equipment I have been emphasizing. So this is very, very important that when the food processing will be strengthened, so there will also be need of manufacturers and good manufacturers. It's not necessarily true that manufacturing should be only investing crores and crores of rupees. Small scale manufacturers, for example, for preparation of good quality of cleaning machines, small scale manufacturers for preparation of the solar dryers in the for the on-farm drying situations, small scale manufacturers for preparation of the roller conveyors or maybe bucket elevators. So they can also be very, very helpful to the support system for the growth of the food processing 
industries. Some sophisticated machines. And let me tell you that the photographs which I have put here, all these machines have been manufactured or are manufactured in our country. So let's think a little bit out of the box. Let us think a little bit to target also to large scale industries where we can cater to the need of different segments to expand our market portfolio. While discussing about the food grains, let's also a little bit talk about the processing opportunities for the fruits and vegetables. I need not speak into the different technologies available for the processing of the fruits and vegetables. Many traditional technologies are available, starting from the preparation of the pickles, starting from the preparation of the different types of fermented products, starting from the preparation of the dehydrated products. And there are also advanced technologies like reverse osmosis, ultrafiltration, irradiation, microwave treatment, all those things. The list is very, very large. And the product profile is also very, very large. And so what I mean to say is that whenever we are thinking of any type of processing enterprise, our thought process will be in two directions. One, it can be process best food processing industry or product best food processing industry. For example, suppose I will be talking about a tomato best food processing industry, the product best. So I can have different lines for the preparation of the juice, puree, paste, ketchup, chutneys, cocktail, like this. But if my intention will be process based, for example, I will be having a vegetable dehydration plant. So in that situation, I can dry different types of vegetables or say fruits in different seasons. So in that situation, my product or my plant can be utilized throughout the year. So remember that whenever we are thinking about any type of industry or enterprise, so you have to plan accordingly, depending on whether I'm going for a process based enterprise or a product based one. For example, though the list is huge or extensive, often some commodities which we call waste can also be channelized into very high grade value added products. One example is the cashew apple. Normally, once you take the nut out, cashew apple is thrown away mostly in the forest areas, or sometimes it is often disposed by paying a cost. But it can be channelized for the preparation of different types of the products like ready to serve beverages, jellies, jams, squares, pickles, etc. Similarly, if we talk about the pineapple, now it has become very, very commercial product. So it can be also channelized or used for the papers of the squares, FTS rings, dehydrated products, canned products like this. And the pineapple rings in sugar solution is an excellent product to be canned. Similarly, stone apple, which normally we call bell. Huh? So they can also be converted to or added, value added to the preparation of jam, RTS, Morobas, Squas, Toppies. These are all photographs of our products developed in our lab. Then the ginger can also be prepared or converted into different types of value added products like the ginger candy, ready to serve beverages, spice additives like dehydrated products, then ginger sushi, it's a fermented product, ginger honey, ginger oleo resin, ginger extract, like this. Huh? So the last two products actually also are from our lab. Actually, this we developed uh, under one NIP project on value chain of ginger and ginger products. So this is another photograph of utilization of the mava flower, which is normally fermented and used by the tribal people, which is normally prevented or prohibitive, but they can also be value added. Similarly, some other common value added products. These are very common things now. Maybe before five or six years, it was not so common. Now, dehydrated onion, dehydrated jackfruit, they are very, very common. Similarly, some of the fish products, when we're talking about the food processing enterprises, we should not forget about uh, fish in a state like Odisha or in India also, we are having a large coastal area. Uh, value added milk products, Many different types of the value added milk products are available. When I was talking about fish, because fish is a very important product in Odisha, 
But once I realized that I'll be speaking to most of the students from Rajasthan, so immediately I had to put the slide for the milk hmm? because I understand how milk is a very important commodity in Rajasthan. So this list is unlimited really. And when I talk about the milk, in Western countries, the milk is supplied at different fat ratings. Milk is available with 0.1% fat, 0.5% fat, 1.0% fat, 1.5% fat like this. So that means under the standard milk also, the milk is available in different grades. Similarly, cream, butter, buttermilk, ghee, like this. So these are some of the opportunities. And when we talk about the milk processing, even the establishment and management of a good quality ice cream manufacturing system can really add to the business. Let's not forget about the Baskins and Robbins or the quality. Similarly, ghee. All of us know when we go to the market, we often require a specific brand of the ghee, the tested brand. So this is very, very important that any single product also taken out of this list can be a good enterprise of such. And this is also important. When we talk about milk or fish or the fruits and vegetables, packaging is very, very important. Packaging, you know, it's for containment, it's for protection, all these things are okay, relevant. But it is also very, very important that packaging adds value to the product by enticing the computer by increasing the marketability. So this is also very, very important in addition to the protection and containment. And when we talk about the grains, many different types of the packaging facilities have been presently available. I am not going into the details. So proper packaging systems, preparation of the proper packaging materials, scientific way of preparing the packaging materials with the desirable oxygen, carbon dioxide, and other light permeabilities. Similarly, when we're talking about the gunny bag or flexible bags also, we have to target all those things when we're going for the manufacture of the packaging materials. So manufacturing and printing of the packaging materials is another very important sector, which is very closely associated with the food processing industries. Some other food packaging options, relatively new concepts. As you all know, I am not going into the details. Huh? Controlled atmosphere, modified atmosphere, vacuum packaging, sink packaging, all those things. Huh? So these are very, very important technologies and gradually gaining market in Indian context. So it's not only that I am going to prepare the food product put in a smart package. It is also very, very important to prepare the smart packaging sensors packaging materials which can be or the fruits and vegetable processing industries can be our buyers this particular important slide modified atmosphere storage of rice huh? so this type of modified atmosphere packaging or storage system for rice huh? they have been developed and they have also been widely practiced and as i mentioned in india also presently there are manufacturers of such type of packaging systems or packaging materials and which are recommended for the packaging of grains. Dr. Nachiket is not here. I remember that in 2006 or so, Nachiket and myself, we had proposed one project proposal on modified atmosphere packaging of grains, which are submitted to NAIP. But that time actually somehow it was not considered with uh, a reasoning that uh, modified atmosphere packaging of grains cannot be really technically feasible. Uh, but now you see this type of packaging systems are presently available and they are being commercially utilized. Some other enterprise options in the primary processing and value addition, on-farm sorting and grading, pre-cooling and on-farm storage, primary processing stations, appropriate packaging, minimal processing. Minimal processing is a new emerging market now in our Indian situations. Minimal processing means you take the products, process it as minimum as possible just to extend the shelf life to a desirable extent and then send it through the cold chain to the marketing centers. And they are being gradually popular for the working people in the family where both of the earning members are working. On-farm storage and pre-cooling, such type of devices are also commercially available. 
And as you was mentioning, minimal processing can be different options will be there, cleaning and trimming, peeling, slicing, packaging. And ultimately, when I talk about the consumers that provides convenience, when I talk about the person who prepares that provides employment, when I talk about the city that gives less city garbage because everything is done on the farm. And as I always say, this type of things, mostly food processing is suitable also for payment. Cold chain logistics, very, very important. When we talk about the fruits and vegetable processing sectors, it is not only that the fruits and vegetable processing industries can help maintain the quality of the commodities and can add value. It is also very, very important that the commodities before reaching the food processing enterprise should be in desired condition, acceptable condition. And for that, the cold chain logistics is very, very important. And there is also huge support by the government for establishment and operation of the cold chain logistics. So, dear friends, opportunities for value addition are plenty. But as Nachiket sir was mentioning, and I will also be reiterating, it's not only that the processing industry or processing enterprise has the whole responsibility of maintaining the quality of the produce. The product quality is also affected by the genetic factors of the varieties. The product quality is also affected by the cultural factors treatments, etc. The product quality is also affected by the environmental factors. The product quality is also affected by the harvesting, like at what maturity level you are harvesting, what is the time you are harvesting, what is the method that you are harvesting, whether during the harvesting the commodity is getting any type of bruises or physical damages, these are very, very important. And the post-harvest activities we have been talking about, Dr. Nachike talked about, and I have also been trying to emphasize on all these things. But let's not forget that. It is very, very important that for the post-harvest activities to give us the best advantages of the commodities and the enterprises, the other subsequent things are so very, very relevant. So the complete value chain management is important. It is not only that we can think about only having the enterprise and get the return. So when I say complete value chain management is important, so one example I can show here. This is the value chain management of ginger. Again, this is a part of my project which I did. So as you can see, in the improved chain, we targeted starting from supply or sourcing of the elite planting material and scientific practices with the farmers, which was done through the farmer producer organizations. Then they were brought to the primary processing centers. So that means to minimize the losses from the point of harvest till it is primarily processed. Then from the primary processing centers, it could go to the retail market to the consumer or there were secondary processing centers also like dried ginger flakes or ginger powder or candies or ginger based tissue. And subsequently, the tertiary processing center was also established like the extraction plant where high value added products. I was mentioning about the ginger oleoresin. I was mentioning about the ginger extracts. So these were obtained. And subsequently, we also tried to link them with the domestic and international market. So whenever we are talking about any types of value addition system for any type of commodity, we have to be a little bit concerned about the quality of the product that we are getting. So this is how I differentiate between value addition and value chain. Value addition can be the change in form. Value addition can be change in time. For example, suppose I am getting the product, most of the cabbages during these months, but I want to sell them during the month of September where the cabbage production is very, very less. So I can store them in suitable devices and this change in time would fetch more return to me. Similarly, change in place, as Dr. Nachiket was also mentioning, I remember at some point of time, the production point is there, the consumption point is far up. Suppose now Odisha is producing a huge quantity of tomatoes. Now the tomato is mostly sold in thrown away prices. So I can send that to places like Rajasthan or maybe to Delhi or maybe to other places where the tomato is not really grown so plentifully. So this is value addition and the value chain starting from the farmer to consumer, it is passing through several stages and each stage is very, very important to be targeted so that there is no loss 
leaving the value chain. Food processing is very good employment and return on investment. So these are some of the studies by Sifet Ludhiana. Dr. Nachiket would have asked the copyright permission for this slide. But anyway, so as you can see, huh? so food processing really gives very good employment as compared to other types of industries, but it is more important that we're dealing with the business for supplying food to the people. So that is very, very important. We are dealing with the business of supplying employment to the rural people. That is very, very important. Economics is also very, very important. So when we talk about the economics of the enterprises, huh? so the different types of inputs, human labor, the energy, these are very, very important. So I did not restrain myself from slowing this slide because I wanted to mention that there is also good opportunity for the manufacture of solar dryers as an industry, for the manufacture of solar pumps as an industry. And let's not forget that these are all essential systems in any food processing enterprise. So having said about all these opportunities in grain processing sector, in fruits and vegetable sector, in storage sector, in value chain sector, in manufacturer of equipment sector, and in value other support systems like storage system. So there are different types of supports available. And as I promised, I will not be going into details because my next uh, or this speaker, Dr. Chauhan, will be speaking all these things. But these are the different organizations which are there to support us, to support the farmers, to improve the quality of the production to support the farmers associations, to reduce the time of marketing, to help in getting good price from the market, to the exporters, again, to link and support, and also to food processors. And we are also there, the universities are also there working with the technologies with applied research. Different types of schemes are also available. And as I was mentioning, I will not be speaking into details, but this is now the PM formalization of micro food processing enterprises scheme. So this is very, very important scheme, which is now emphasizing on improving the status and number of the micro enterprises. And ultimately, they are mostly targeting on the on-farm processing and value addition. When we talk about the micro enterprises, we are targeting on the on-farm processing and value addition. And one particular innovative concept on this is one district, one product. So that means suppose, for example, my district having banana, a major production is banana. So most of the processing units in this district will be having banana as the product or the raw material. So the marketing of the products will be easy. Branding of the products will be easy. And the value chain will be more comfortable and easy. And as uh, Dr. Nachiket was mentioning, and I think Sanjay Jain sir was mentioning, and also the Dean of Research sir was mentioning. So PMFME is being implemented in almost all the states of uh, the country. And in Odisha, I am the nodal officer for the PMFME program. And in CTA also the PMFME scheme is operating. And I think Dr. Sanjay Jain sir and Dr. N.K. Jain sir are also very closely associated with this project. Similarly, in the different state governments also, there are uh, different types of schemes in the state agriculture policies. PMFME scheme came just two years before 2020, huh? but this type of schemes have been operating before that also. And in addition, the other agencies like the National Horticulture Board, the agencies like NABAD, they're also having their different uh, setups for supporting and promoting the food processing sectors in the country. Yes, this is what I was trying to mention, APIDA, NSB, NABAD, all those things, they're also there, but it's also very important that they're supporting marketing. Uh, marketing support is very, very important, very, very vital, and the government also is trying to support the marketing to the maximum extent so that the exploitation to the small producers is not there. So while I will sum up my talk, so as I have been trying to emphasize, I'll be repeating, the opportunities are plenty in the form of processing and value addition. The value addition can be in the form of primary processing, secondary processing, and tertiary processing. The waste utilization of waste products, but as I mentioned, waste is not a word for the food processing industries. So it should be utilization of co-products. Manufacture of food processing machinery, value chain management, transportation and storage network, and also on-farm processing has a huge opportunity to 
venture into. And the government has been supporting, and now the processes are being simplified in the form of incentives and subsidies, in the form of infrastructure support, in the form of human resource development through trainings, incubation programs, etc., which will be discussed by the subsequent speaker under different schemes. And there are also loans. So now it's our responsibility to jump the hurdles and take the challenge to venture into the system. But when we are going to the system, please don't forget any process huh, that are three components, the produce, the methodology of processing and the equipment which will be required for processing. And the most important is good quality produce. You should not forget that. So once we have the good quality produce, then proper synchronization of the methods and equipment and proper management only can fetch a good product. And let us not forget that we are targeting a business. So good product is the only answer to good business. Well, thank you so much, sir. Uh, this is what I wanted to share with all of you. Post harvest management, this is my slogan. I always say PHM for PHM. Post harvest management is uh, to combat uh, poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity to speak to all the eminent uh, professors and faculty members uh, of uh, MPUAT and uh, excellent listeners who have registered here. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was a very wonderful uh, deliberation from your side covering whole of the post harvest management and all the food groups and from uh, the raw material to the packaging and then to the marketing part and the schemes uh, related. So that was indeed a wonderful presentation and students uh, must have gained a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Sanjay. Thank you very much. Sir, thank you. Sir. Nice presentation. Thank you. And moving forward. Uh, thank you, Dasta. You have given a actually new dimension of uh, not only for the processing, but for the manufacturing of the equipment. And one of your junior alumni of our college is also actually engaged in the uh, manufacturing of the machineries. You must be knowing Santosh Karale. Okay. Uh, he is in Maharashtra and uh, he is in a very good, uh, uh, he's preparing and manufacturing the very good uh, process machineries. And uh, definitely you have given a very elaborative and very uh, deliberate talk and uh, also you have summed up the, in a very effective manner, sir. Thanks. Sir, thank uh, you. I do know you are also very busy and you have to actually rush to again Calcutta, but thanks a lot and uh, accepting our invitation, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, sir, I may also kindly be excused. I have another meeting with the principal secretary agriculture now. So if you kindly permit, I would like to leave, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, Dean, sir. sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Raksha. Sir. And sir. sir, please. Please give a one or two lines, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sir is busy in some urgent uh, okay, work. Okay, okay, no problem, so, no problem. Uh, from his side, uh, he has conveyed his uh, thanks to the speakers uh, and especially to Sanjay sir uh, for his wonderful deliberation on the theme. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, moving forward, we have a, another uh, eminent speaker with us, uh, Dr. P. M. Chauhan, sir. Uh, he uh, he, has, uh, he has been alumni of uh, CTA and uh, he is an uh, eminent uh, research scientist in the field of uh, renewable energy. He has received uh, about national uh, six national awards and a recipient of two uh, scholarships and fellow, uh, author fellowships. He has uh, more than 33 years of experience in the area of uh, renewable energy and 15 years as professor and head in the Department of Renewable Energy, Junagar, Junagar Agriculture University. He is also in charge registrar and director of research Dean PG studies at the Junagar Agriculture University. Uh, he has uh, 11 sponsored, he has 11 sponsored research academic projects of more than 33 crores 
including the world uh, prestigious world bank uh, idp nahep project and uh, he has released 18 technologies or the recommendations for the farmers of gujarat he has received patent and national award for development of foldable plastic box for transportation transportation of fruits and vegetable and uh, he has uh, he is the convener of mera gaon mera gaurav uh, at junagar agriculture university and he has published more than 60 research papers in various national and international journals uh, three books 10 chapters in books five pamphlets and 20 gujarati articles for farmers he is a member of 21 scientific committees governing bodies including academic council research council board of studies library council and member of editorial board of scientific journals prt and member of icar accreditation he is the visiting faculty of University of California, Davis, and uh, he's, uh, he has done his one year postdoctoral research work on effect of shading material on greenhouse, microclimate and energy conservation and production characteristics of cut flower roses. Sir, I on behalf of the whole uh, MPAT fa family welcome you here. Thank you. Thank you. Shall I start my uh, presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, uh, Singh Saab, uh, the Dean of the College, uh, Sanjay Jain, the my good friend at the uh, uh, Department of Processing and Food Engineering, Dr. N.K. Jain, the Dean of the Dairy Science College. Uh, I especially thankful to the Dr. Uh, N.S. Rathor Saab, the Vice Chancellor of the BUAT, uh, Dr. Sarma Saab, the Director of Research of MPUAT, all the friends and dear students. Uh, the topic, uh, is given to me is uh, government policies and uh, the schemes so far uh, in food processing sector. Friends, uh, we have the lot of advantage uh, in agriculture and uh, therefore as uh, Indian habits for eating the food is uh, very, as you know, the it's a warm food and uh, very fresh food we are habitual for eating but uh, if you look uh, around the world then the lot of food processing activities are going on and the the world scenario we are quite behind in food processing sector and therefore the government is doing a lot of initiation and uh, giving the good in, uh, advantage to the industries for setting up the industries and as well as the there are the if there is any difficulties then the regulations improving the regulations and uh, giving the financial incentives to this industries friends we know that we are almost uh, more than 132 billion population and uh, was, or 132 crore uh, population 1.32 billion population out of this 30 percent uh, uh, is middle class or maybe a more middle class and uh, this middle class income is expected to be uh, uh, 1.5 times or double by 2025 because uh, the middle class family having a lot of uh, aspirations and uh, they are interested to uh, uh, use the uh, whatever the new technologies or new foods are uh, coming in market they always like that uh, changes so this food processing industry is uh, we can say that is uh, mostly dedicated to the uh, middle class families of the india as well as uh, a, a good potential for the export point of view uh, why why we are emphasizing on the this food processing industries business or uh, uh, the presently the government also putting the lot of efforts behind this uh, food processing uh, uh, industries because 
uh, a government initiative is is to create the a good uh, environment so that the food processing industry or other industries can do their business without any hassle and uh, as well as the government is also doing the a lot of efforts on on uh, uh, on new infrastructures particularly the mega food uh, uh, um, projects then the economy is also very open nowadays and uh, we can trade anywhere in the world and there is a, a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, knowledge is given to the the entrepreneurs so that they can do their business in a, in a in a world uh, level there uh, every year the government is also reforming their regulatory uh, uh, conditions and uh, as much as possible they are trying to government is trying to make it uh, suitable for the entrepreneurs and as well as the to do the business easy business fiscal reforms also a, a very important and therefore the the government is also taking care of that friends the india has a very good food production as we know that we are uh, uh, having a, a very good uh, the cereal production is in terms of the the rice or wheat as well as the uh, pulses also we are having a good production then the fruits and vegetables milk and the seafood productions so we are uh, having a very good food production say, in uh, in almost all sectors but uh, the processing is point of view we are still lacking and uh, and therefore the, we are emphasizing on the food processing industries uh, about 52% of the cultivable land is available for the cultivation in india as compared to 11% in the world so this is our advantage or uh, we have a, a advantageous position as compared to world that we can cultivate almost all crops and uh, 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 including the fruits vegetables cereals pulses and uh, fish products uh, uh, poultry products meat products a lot of products we are or, or we are uh, we are uh, uh, making that but uh, 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 we are still left behind of the world and uh, we have the 15 major climates that is the existing in the world which is available in india and uh, the 46 out of the total 60 types of the soils we have in india and uh, we have a lot of plenty of solar sun science hours so that we can generate the the food pro, uh, uh, without any climatic uh, effect or, so that uh, we have very advantageous position in food production and uh, this food production, as you know, that uh, in uh, in warehouses or storages and government has to procure at different places. And uh, there are a lot of uh, problems in storage. And therefore, uh, it is very uh, convenient that if you can uh, go for the food processing, then the, this will be helpful for the storage point of view, as well as for to reduce the, the food production losses point of view also. As I said that we are first in milk in the last year, we have uh, produced all, almost 199 million tons of the milk and uh, it is expected that it will grow by 13 to 15 percent in uh, in the coming years, as well as the huge opportunity for technology uh, automation and uh, integration in this sector also or in for this uh, dairy products also. We are the second largest global production uh, producer of the fruits and vegetables about 300.26 uh, uh, million tons of the fruit production that is of the 12% of the world and uh, we have the major vegetables like potato, tomato, onion, cauliflower, cabbage and uh, fruits like mango the 60% of the total uh, world production we are producing and banana 12% of the world apple orange sapota bear pomegranate and uh, however the uh, in the processing level is only two percent in the area of foods and vegetables similarly in cereals and grains we are the second in rice and wheat production and uh, largest exporter of the cereal products 
and uh, offers a huge opportunity for milling technology and upgradation automation and integration fortification and like that kind of the technology second product we are pro uh, producer in the world in fish and processing level of marine products is about 23 percent uh, and offers a huge opportunity in cold chain export packaging innovation product etc so uh, and as well as in egg and milk meat uh, uh, we are third in egg and fifth in meat production and uh, these are also a very good uh, scope for the uh, processing sector so the why why we are interested in processing because uh, it is uh, not only that we have a very good food food production but uh, we have also a a more than 55% of the population is depending on the food uh, agriculture and the uh, agriculture related activities and if the food processing unit uh, that will act as a linkage between the agriculture and industries then we can have a very good uh, employment opportunity in the food processing sector also or food processing industry can uh, absorb a, a major share of the workers uh, from this agriculture sector then they as we know that we have a huge quantity of losses you know, particularly in in godowns and uh, uh, and the temporary storage structures and as well as the at farm level also and therefore the to reduce this uh, farm uh, uh, to reduce this food store uh, wastage it is uh, very necessary that uh, we can have a food processing in the, and uh, we can uh, uh, give the more food to the the our people then the this food processing uh, or processed food requires the less uh, space in the storage as compared to raw foods so that uh, we can store this uh, food uh, very effectively and uh, the processed food can be exported that will help to earn the foreign exchange friends uh, as i said that we are quite behind in food processing and uh, if you see that uh, in a world level then the malaysia is uh, ex uh, is processing almost uh, 80% philippines about 78% brazil 70% usa 65% china 23% and uh, we are 10 or less than 10% and uh, if we see in india in different uh, uh, processing sectors then dairy we are about 35% is uh, uh, the dairy products we are uh, we are uh, we are producing then the meat is about 21 percent in processing level and uh, poultry six percent then the fruits and vegetables is about 2.5 percent and marine products is about 23 percent the fish and all this is about 23 percent so this uh uh, uh we have the number of the fruit processing industries at present and uh, uh, we have the lot of food product uh, processing uh, nowadays uh, going on and uh, as well as uh, uh, we are also exporting these uh, products but uh, there are the still we have the large scope so at present uh, so far the available food industries the 13 percent are large scale units 75 percent home cottage and 12% are medium or small scale units are available and uh, in india uh, if we if we oh, if we see that the farm gate prices are 25% uh, uh, in india that means uh, the whatever the value of the pr product in from the farm is uh, uh, that costing is about 25% at the farm level and remaining is the at the transportation and all that whereas in case of the developed countries, other development uh, developed countries, that they have the 60 to 70 percent is the farm gate prices. So we have very good advantage on the farm gate price point of view also because at farm level production where cost is is uh, we have the low cost value, as well as as well as the transportation and that we have the we have the more uh, cost as compared to the uh, other countries. So, but we have the difficulties at that we have five to seven intermediary between the farmers and the consumer, whereas uh, in USA it is only two to three uh, percent. So that the earlier also the government has uh, has uh, uh, introduced the three bills 
in that uh, this was the one of the major reason that uh, intermediary that is between the farmers and consumers they are very very uh, very large numbers and uh, the cost uh, is shared by this intermediary and uh, the farmers and the consumers are uh, getting very less uh, if we see the subsectors opportunity in processing and value addition then the uh, there are the new product development there are a lot of good scope for the new product development including the 45 products then the health food uh, traditional indian food products and uh, uh, convenience food products and a new packaging technology for enhancing the shelf life retaining the taste and texture easy to handle and space efficiently so this is the 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 uh, we have a good scope in new product development as well as the packaging technologies we have also a very good scope for infrastructure development uh, government is, is is has initiated in terms of the mega food parks and uh, agro processing clusters also is uh, giving emphasis on to for the cold chain facilities frozen and all this kind of the products and uh, modern pack houses for fruits and veg vegetables as well as the logistic uh, uh, providing the logistic uh, in the various sectors so there are the lot of opportunity in this sectors also in a development of infrastructure or a logistic uh, development so from the farm uh, to the uh, plate or consumer there are the uh, post harvest uh, operations uh, uh, there are the opportunity in post harvest operations in on farm there are the opportunity in secondary processing at catchment in uh, in that and a high level processing that is the factory at factory level and then the marketing and the uh, advertisement and all that so a lot of scope is there in food processing industries and therefore the the policy and schemes of the in this uh, uh, industries are very important and the the uh, and new entrepreneurs they are definitely uh, looking the uh, towards the government for different incentives in this industry as well as uh, what are the different uh, uh, friendly policy so that uh, they can uh, uh, do their uh, entrepreneurship uh, 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 very uh, in a in a friendly environment uh, there are the as said that there are the number of industries are are aware, uh, that have a good scope they sell uh, cereal and pulse milling fruit uh, vegetable processing milk and milk products beverages fish and poultry eggs and products meat and meat products so all these uh, uh, types of different types of food processing industries now is uh, coming up and there are the very good scope and different states and uh, there are the number of uh, uh, state uh, different states having a different uh, schemes uh, for the the uh, uh, supportive schemes and the different uh, policy uh, uh, policies friends uh, still uh, uh, if you can you, you when you see that the fpmc and the market uh, there are the transportation uh, is uh, we can see this this is the our scenario in for in transportation even uh, um, i have i have visited a lot of several fpmcs uh, in gondal a large uh, fpmc in near in, in uh, rajkot where 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 there is a, a huge uh, um, uh, commodities uh, or farm for products uh, production they are uh, procuring but uh, the transportation uh, if you find that fruits and vegetables or maybe a uh, cereals spices and all that still we are transporting in a, in a large quantity in gunny bags as well as uh, the loose uh, uh, packaging and uh, you will find there is a lot of uh, uh, losses uh, in during this transportation so it's a very good uh, opportunity for the transportation sector also and uh, we have to develop the a, 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 a suitable logistic for the transportation in this area as said that technology and equipment that uh, uh, new technology in processing storage logistic packaging energy efficient technology food testing lab labs all these are required a very good infrastructure and uh, therefore the 
the uh, uh, enthusiastic uh, entrepreneurs are encouraged by the government to uh, enter in this kind of the sectors and not only the processing but the development of the technology and the quality testing and all these labs that uh, that is also needed to for the establishment and uh, so that the the a, a, uh, consumer can get the a safe uh, uh, food product as well as the quality food products the packaging and material and machinery is also a, a, a getting a boost uh, from the government policies and uh, initiatives and uh, there are the a very good uh, packaging technologies nowadays available as well as the technical machinery for the packaging technologies also available uh, and uh, there are the uh, another uh, very important area is the r and d and skill development area where there is a government is putting a lot of uh, emphasis uh, on skill development uh, for the students uh, as well as the for the youth and there are the lot of uh, skill development centers and where the the, the youth can uh, can be trained and can uh, be encouraged for the starting their uh, startups and uh, and uh, and uh, the inter become for uh, becoming the entrepreneurs similarly there are the opportunity in in a, in a retail sectors and uh, it's about uh, more than uh, 600 billion uh, uh, dollars uh, us dollars uh, there are this uh, probabilities or scope and uh, and it is growing at the rate of the 7.5% and uh, it, it is uh, uh, estimated that uh, it con constitute about 60% of the total food pro uh, producing uh, food processing industry so uh, retail sector is a, is also a very good uh, opportunity in that a uh, uh, lot of uh, apps are coming up uh, for the uh, the uh, for the purchasing or for the uh, consumer point of view and uh, our students have also developed uh, the the online chain for the uh, consumers and uh, a good uh, um, apps uh, that is for organic food production or like that they have developed and uh, they are uh, getting a good uh, benefit for that of that uh, and there are the opportunities in uh, unrecognized sectors uh, like uh, uh, there are the number of the sectors which are at present even they are not that much recognized like uh, for, uh, the farmers uh, itself uh, having a organic uh, farming products uh, and uh, they are making their fpo and uh, they are uh, directly selling uh, the products to the consumers similarly uh, there are the number of other industries who are working at the household industries they are not that much of recognized industries if we can uh, uh, put it into a cluster or put it to a a, a recognized way then they will get more benefit and uh, it is our uh, 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 strength that, that we can do that kind of the job than the the this uh, larger scale of rural uh, uh, population or rural youth or rural women that can be helpful uh, that can be helped uh, with this kind of the the initiation uh, national uh, food processing policy uh this was launched uh, uh in a for uh, to develop the food processing sector and uh, uh, this uh, aims to address the gaps uh, hampering the growth uh, of the sector and also policy aims to increase the investment in the sector by six times in by 2035 so this is the national uh, uh, food processing policy is launched and its aim is that the uh, is uh, to uh, make the six times of the fruit processing uh, 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 enhancement as compared to present uh, uh, days in, by 2035. So the reason that, uh, behind the food processing policy is uh, at the producer level uh, and consumer level. Uh, if you see the producer level, there are the a lot of field losses, and then the means at farm farm level, there are a lot of field losses. Then the pre-processing level, then the transport, storage, processing, and packaging, marketing wastage by the consumer. So, in a, in our in a, most of the developing countries, the relatively high losses 
in an initial part of the uh, the value chain whereas in the rich countries it is a later stage where the food losses are more so in our case uh, we have the high food losses in a field in a pre processing transport storage and uh, at the most in a in a processing and packaging whereas uh, in a, in a in case of the rich countries there are the uh, wastage at the marketing and the wastage at by consumer level so we have to take care we have to uh, we have to take care about that uh, how we can reduce this uh, uh, food losses and therefore this aiming is the by the uh, food processing policy so uh, the reason behind this uh, food processing policy establishment is uh, the multiplicity of the laws and regulatory authorities lack of participation of cooperative institutions PRIs and NGOs, adherence to quality and SPS measures under WTO, little value addition in food processing industries, that is 7% around, and 75% of the sector comprises of small scale and unrecognized sector. So uh, to uplift this, all this uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, participants or, uh, or stakeholders, it is uh, very necessary that uh, food processing policy should be in favor of this uh, uh, this uh, so that uh, they can do the business in a very cordial way. So in this, uh, uh, what are the incentives? So capital investment uh, uh, in subsidy form or uh, new food processing universities, uh, sorry, processing units. So the, how the, uh, the uh, food processing units are helped by the uh, uh, providing the capital investment as well as the subsidy. Then the uh, incentives for the technology upgradation in existing units. So whatever the present units are available, maybe a Ghani, maybe a Kolar, uh, maybe a different, uh, uh, that uh, uh, we can say the old technologies, how to upgrade these technologies and uh, to uh, so that the efficient way the processing can be done, as well as the quality of the fruit product can also be uh, improved. Then the low GST rates on the food processing machines and electricity duty and land related concessions. So all these are, are accommodated or all these are taken care in the proposed for uh, the um, food processing policy. So the uh, uh, what is the the promotion for the employment? So to encourage the and facilitate the farmers to set up the food processing units. So through this uh, uh, particular uh, policy point of view, as we know the uh, vocal for local, so that the whatever the the farm products uh, that is the uh, they will uh, produce at the local level, they should be the processed, uh, and uh, and therefore the farmers can be a, a, a given advantage in this kind of the policy to promote the food processing training come incubation centers a lot of uh, incubation centers uh, are come have uh, come up and uh, and a lot of trainings are going on uh, for the different uh, uh, start uh, startup uh, um, um, students and uh, uh, they are encouraged for this setting up the industries and uh, they are encouraged for the entrepreneurship development so a lot of trainings and the, the incubation centers are developed by the government. And to start the new course and conduct the research in food pro technology and management in universities, a lot of uh, new courses and uh, research uh, uh, also coming up and, uh, and the universities are benefited through the uh, new technology uh, pro in, in a, in a uh, uh, food processing sector. So they are introducing a new courses and uh, as well as taking up the lot of research activities in this area. What does the policy propose for supply chains? So for the supply chains, uh, uh, that is the, the policies are identifying and uh, developing the uh, and promoting the production cluster and agriculture processing clusters. So, and uh, to support the development of logistic infrastructure, this includes uh, cleaning and packaging facilities. 
so in supply chains uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, clusters are developed uh, so that the, the the supply chains can get the a, a benefit of this the saline features uh, so where there are the these are the five saline features including the creating uh, enabling the environment so very cohesive environment to be created using this uh, uh, national food processing policy is uh, uh, so it will help to create the the uh, uh, very enabling environment so that the entrepreneurs can get the the guidance can get the finance uh, uh, assistance and the the technical assistance uh, skill development and everything that so that uh, easily so that kind of the environment is to be created then infrastructure development under this policy there are a lot of infrastructure development is proposed and uh, uh, government is uh, uh, is is uh, at present even uh, um, uh, there is a there is a circulation from the government that about 343 mega uh, food park is to be developed in a, in a country with a very good infrastructure and uh, uh, so that the the uh, the uh, entrepreneurs uh, who established the uh, uh, industry there they cannot feel any problem in a in a, uh, installation of this industry backward linkage and forward linkage then special provisions also made in this kind of the policy so what is the uh, as said that enable uh, enabling the environment that means the rationalizing the tax structure whatever the tax at present gst or like that that is the rationalize and the fiscal initiatives uh, that will be make uh, easy for the the uh, entrepreneurs harmonization and simplification of food laws there are the lot of uh, earlier the the laws uh, or at present also some laws are very complicated laws uh, particularly in uh, oil oil uh, processing industries and uh, oil seed processing industries as well as the some uh, uh, food industries uh, so that uh, how to make simplification of this laws is also is a aim of the the uh, food policy the market creation for food uh, uh, for the processed food how to create the market uh, for different types of the food maybe a organic food maybe a natural farming food or in, from the other sectors uh, maybe so how to create the market for this and then uh, all this are to be taken also care by this policy investment pro uh, promotion the as say that 100% uh, fdi is is there at present and they, and they, as well as there is a domestic uh, investment how to improve that is also a one of the policy uh, promotion so if you see that uh, uh, in a in a in a proactive policy support the 100% fdi through the automatic route in food processing 100% fdi in food retail for the food products manufacture and produce in india so from any corner of the world any anywhere from the world one can invest here and uh, and uh, you can uh, develop the industry here so credit uh, food processing unit can avail preferral uh, rates under the priority sector leading and a special fund of rupees 2000 crores with nabard for designated food parks and processing units and now it was earlier but now recently also the government has uh, announced that uh, there is a good amount of the uh, food for the food parks there are the good amount of the uh, uh, investment is to be done by the government in uh, and uh, the budgetary provision has been made regulatory reforms has said that fis fiscal reforms and proactive state investment policy so uh, states also nowadays are also uh, uh, putting liberal uh, in uh, policies uh, for attracting the investment uh, uh, in this sector 100% income tax deduction on capital expenditure for cold chain and warehouses there are 100% tax uh, deduction income tax deduction on profit of for new food processing 
preservation and packaging units also uh, there is a, a, a income tax deduction then service tax exemptions on pre cooling pre, uh, and the pre conditioning ripening waxing retailing uh, packaging labeling fruit of uh, fruits and vegetables then construction erection commissioning and installation of post harvest storage infrastructure and cold storage so good uh, uh, in, uh, um, incentives are given by the government in terms of the uh, tax exemption in a in a uh, uh, food processing uh, uh, sector and as well as the the cold chains and all that so in a, in a food processing uh, uh, pro, um, uh, as well as the uh, the, the uh, transportation and cold storage is and there are the good incentives are given then the excise duty reduction 10 to 6 6% uh, on machinery for food processing and 12.5 to 6% on refrigerated condition con containers so uh, there are the good exercise uh, excise duty reduction on the machineries and the containers basic uh, custom duty reduce on refrigerated containers from uh, 10 to 6% or 5% and concessional custom duty on important equip imported equipment so if a, there is a imported equipments are to be installed then also there is a custom duty uh, also a concession is there in infrastructure development uh, uh, development of back end infrastructure and infrastructure to implement the latest technology of the sectors and development of agro food parks and food processing training institutes so these are the the some uh, uh, initiatives by the government that a uh, uh, lo lot of uh, infrastructures uh, are required for in the food processing industries so that uh, uh, a back end infrastructure or a, a latest technology or a, or a training institutes and food parks these are the uh, new uh, initiatives by the government in an infrastructure development so at present uh, there are the uh, 42 mega food parks uh, available in country and uh, they have a very good uh, facilities uh, and uh, fully developed lo and developed plots are available for setting up fruits including plug and play so, so that uh, you just uh, there are the the, uh, the these are the plots are fully developed roads uh, water uh, uh, connection road connection electricity connection and then there is a different facilities uh, uh, available at this park and uh, just uh, you have to set up the industry and, uh, and you don't have to worry for the different uh, 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 requirements that we uh, in terms of the the transportation the road and uh, the light and all that then the coal chains 135 integrated coal chain products projects with an investment of uh, 500 million us dollars it is also a now the coming up and uh, uh, government is doing in this a very good uh, initiation in backward linkages the linkage between farmers and processors that means a uh, 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 government is effort is that uh, the how to create linkage between the farmers and processors in a, in a forward linkages the processors and marketing in a backward linkages farmers and processors then the how to develop the future markets that means different uh, the markets to be developed for the suppose say uh, the for the organic or uh, or a uh, 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 this kind of the product uh, the market is required so this uh, uh, if we, we we can see that in sikkim and that there is a, a, a some districts also now announced a very uh, the whole district as a natural farming districts the product from this this uh, farmers they come to a market uh, and uh, it required a specific market and therefore the the development of this kind of the market is required and the government is is also giving initiate initiation or uh, give incentives to this kind of the market they minimize the gap between farm gate price and final price the very important uh, point is, uh, is the the, the, how to reduce the gap between the farm gate price and the consumer price. 
so uh, that means the how to reduce the the intermediary the benefit uh, uh, by the different uh, 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 intermediate intermediators and uh, as i said that uh, the total food uh, the products that comes to the plate uh, the 75% goes to the intermediary and only the 25% is the farm gate price so how to reduce it and uh, at least uh, it should be reverse I, or we can say that it should be like 75% of the farm gate price uh, uh, of the final price so this is the very important uh, uh, factor and uh, for that uh, the farmers and the consumers are required to be uh, linkages between the farmers and consumers to be established uh, the forward linkages in that uh, elimination of intermediaries as i said then the marketing network the marketing network uh, how to make the network so that the price fluctuation is, is minimized as well as the, throughout the country uh, the price uh, uh, is, uh, we can if we can make it uniform or we can minimize the the difference then the the consumer can be benefited or uh, or even a, a, a good uh, network uh, can have uh, give advantage of to the consumers as well as to the farmers then the the improving the or uh, developing the marketing capabilities so far the the marketing capabilities uh, in a in a large cities is there but in rural uh, areas or uh, small towns is the marketing capabilities are not that much so how to improve that or how to develop the marketing capabilities so uh, uh, as uh, so this the policy is uh, something like that uh, the stakeholders with that uh, that connected that can be connected with the government consumer farmers and the co cooperative ngos and pris financial institutions and academic research and institutions stakeholders means the uh, the food processing industry uh, entrepreneurs so due to this uh, the merits of this uh, uh, national policy on uh, food processing that will help the farmer uh, for better remuneration reduce the risk and uncertainties and access to advanced technology the farmers can get the advanced technology and the uh, the whatever the risk uh, at present in uh, in the production and and that can be minimized as well as they can get a better price of their product or produ uh, produce that is the uh, the this policy has the uh, has the merits the consumer has the uh, can get the quality products and the uh, with a reasonable cost and increase the um, product varieties uh, so that the consumer can get the number of varieties in a, in a market and uh, he has the choice to uh, what to eat and what to not to eat so this is the uh, consumer point of view and the farmer point of view these are the the policies may, uh, framed out with the such merits and uh, infrastructure development point of view uh, the policy has uh, the pre uh, processing uh, uh, facilities than the transportation and warehousing and post processing and uh, this is this is the the wherever the necessary that can be created and uh, for the pre processing and transportation and post processing uh, uh, and that so that the it can be reached to the market uh, with a uh, with a very good uh, handling uh, way and uh, as well as the in for the research and development uh, uh, the, how the institutes can be linked with the industries and the how the industry can be linked with the universities or a or a educational institutes or a research institutes that is also a, a merit of this policy and economic benefits that inclusive the growth so overall growth will be improved and future market will be also improved and export the promotions however there are still there are the, some areas of concern that is the transition transition from food crops to cash because nowadays as you know that a lot of uh, food crops are now 
uh, the production of food crops are now uh, out. Uh, the cash crop has taken place, uh, replaces the food for crops, which is a, one of the concern because uh, uh, um, you say the in ground instead of groundnut, the the cotton crop is 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 catching more uh, areas, as well as uh, 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 some other ca cash crops also catching more areas as compared to food products. This is the quite concern. The regulation of foreign investment in food processing se sectors. This is also a, a another uh, concern area that uh, the regulation uh, in FDI in food processing industries is still uh, that not much of uh, 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 perceive or that much not of the uh, easy for the forest investment. No provision for regulation of processing units. Uh, so there are the number of the, as I said, that number of processing units in, in rural areas at household units are available in a, in a very small scale units are available, but uh, there are the hardly any regulations for this units. Uh, they are processing the food uh, in, a, in a different uh, environment and uh, maybe a, a, a quality point of view or safety point of view. They are not that much of suitable sometimes, and uh, even then, and they are uh, um, they are uh, producing the food and uh, putting into the market. So a a regulation is required to regulate such kind of the uh, uh, industries so that the quality and uh, uh, safe food can be uh, to be gained by the uh, consumers. Very good example is the milk. Suppose say milk. Okay, milk is produced by the by the uh, animal uh, uh, keepers, and uh, and we see that uh, there are the lot of things are added in that. Um, um, uh, we can say that uh, in a milk products, uh, uh, even before the Diwali festivals and all that festivals, a government is a uh, lot of news is come, coming that uh, this is the a. Uh, Mawa is made from or uh, made from this uh, um, foreign materials and all that. Okay, so a uh, good regulation is required for the uh, for in in such type of processing units. Failure to address the issue of low credit availability. Uh, so uh, some issues are there for low credit uh, uh, for required for the some industries. So that is to be also addressed. Absence of specific provision for small and marginal farmers. So very small farmers are like that. Uh, they are not that much of benefited through this kind of the policies uh, as uh, as the farmers are saying. So uh, that is also to be taken into care. There are the implementation issues, large scale funding requirements for infrastructure development. As the government has a, has a, uh, announced that a mega food parks number of mega food parks in different uh, uh, states and but the large funding is required for the development of this uh, sectors have uh, a pole chain then the mega food parks uh, equipments procur procuring the equipments establishing the industries this is the uh, huge uh, funding is required so uh, still there is a uh, some issues and uh, and uh, that is to be also taken care of in future. Reluctance of farmers to adapt the new environment. So sometimes they, as we have seen the uh, um, in recent uh, days that uh, last year and that the farmers are not that much of uh, adaptive uh, in the new policies, uh, particularly the the regulations, and uh, uh, sometimes we have to back up back the things and so that the uh, uh, a, a very slow process you know, for the the development or a, you know, or a, or a adoption is a very slow process uh, for the uh, new environment strong chain of middlemen as said middlemen that is the lot of uh, strong chain is available so to break this chain is a quite uh, uh, required quite efforts Financial inclusion issues for the uh, farmers. 
farmers required immediate finance uh, uh, so that they are unable to store the, their products they are unable to process their products at a village level and therefore uh, they are selling the uh, their uh, pro produce in market so that uh, these are the some issues and uh, and uh, sometimes uh, there is a, a a gap between the center and states and so that the the policy is not implemented as uh, in the favor of the consumers and in the favor of the farmers or in the favor of favor of the uh, stakeholders there are the lot of schemes are available for and government is doing a good initiatives uh, for the promoting the food processing industries uh, and these are the some schemes and uh, listed here and uh, very the names are like uh, mudra uh, this can uh, this under this scheme uh, the 10 lakhs without any uh, collateral security that can be obtained through this scheme there are websites are given so one can go through this website and you can get the more uh, uh, information from this website the pm egp uh, is another scheme uh, which course uh, the this helps to the new units uh, with a project cost up to the 25 lakhs under the industry and 10 lakhs under the service with subsidy ranging from 15 to 35 percent then stand up india the women are scst uh, entrepreneurs uh, for no new units and 10 lakhs and above they are getting then msme scheme the new or existing msme units with primary and collect collateral uh, uh, surety or a CGT MSC cover up with up to the uh, two crores. Then uh, PM FME, that micro food processing uh, at present uh, latest uh, techno uh, this scheme is announced by the government. And uh, under that, uh, I'm also the member of this committee. And uh, uh, in this, uh, a very various cluster is formed at different districts and uh, in districts uh, having a their uh, their produce uh, in in say in junagadh we have the some spice crops uh, in coriander and fenugreek and uh, cumin and these are the processing there they is given benefit to this uh, uh, produce so the, there are the in different districts uh, this is the district level so uh, a district can uh, have a different uh, uh, crop uh, produce uh, at, in that particular produce. Uh, a, if the entrepreneurs are interested to invest uh, for the processing unit, uh, then they can get uh, the subsidy up to the 10 lakhs, and uh, they they can install the uh, establish the industry in particular uh, crop of the district. Then PSB loans. Existing units of MSME, they comply IT and GST. And uh, then the PMS VA Nidhi Yojna, that is the loan to street vendors up to the uh, 10,000 under Atmanirbhar Bharat. Startup India, SEA BC, and that also the uh, eligible uh, can get the loan to the 20 lakhs rupees and 36% uh, subsidy is also can be obtained from the NABAR. Then FPO, they supports the farmer producer organization for uh, infrastructure and working uh, capital needs. Then education in that uh, sub IITs and other professional institutes uh, that can get the support uh, for skill development uh, activities. Then PMAY, the house loan in this was annual income is less than 18 lakhs concession in interest from 3 to 6.5 and uh, this is the uh, another is the pmky the pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana for the skill development particularly and there are the these are the number of schemes besides this there are the other schemes of the uh, naba uh, nabard then the scheme of the uh, National Horticulture Mission, National Horticulture Board, and there are these many schemes are available. The only thing is the the entrepreneurs and the 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 
uh, uh, the food processing industry uh, interested uh, uh, entrepreneurs they have to study the carefully that uh, schemes uh, more useful for them and uh, they can adopt these schemes uh, uh, and they can approach these district uh, uh, authorities and uh, can apply there in a, in a, as well as uh, then the district, district authorities and the recommends to the state or, and then state or to the uh, central government. This is the one, the scheme that is the, uh, Dr. Das has narrated, uh, but uh, it's a very good scheme uh, that uh, by the food processing, uh, uh, Ministry of Food Processing and Industries and Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana, in that um, um, mega food parks, integrated cold chain, creation and expansion of food processing and preservation of capacities, then the creation of infrastructure for agro processing clusters, creation of backward and forward linkages, uh, food safety and quality assurance infrastructure, that means to establish the labs and all that, and uh, human resource and institution for industries and skill development also. There are the, the uh, there is a, uh, the PMKSY, that is, that is the a, a Yojna, that is the, from the Ministry of Food Processing and Industries is available and one can avail the benefit of this. Uh, mega food parks, uh, uh, the, um, very good food parks are established uh, in, uh, in Rajasthan also at near to Ajmer. Uh, there is a uh, food park uh, is available and uh, in that, uh, uh, in this, uh, particular food park uh, provides the linkages between the agriculture production and market so that uh, the farmers, processors and retailers come together. And then the creation of state of art uh, support infrastructure in a well-defined horticulture zone for setting up the modern food processing unit, industrial plots provided in the park with well-established supply chain. So in this parks already there are the uh, plots are available in a, in a this is this kind of the parks are uh, established in a in a in a industrial area of the particular district and uh, the, a, a district is identified by the government and uh, in in Rajasthan six districts are, have been identified including the uh, Ajmer Alwar uh, there are the other four districts uh, Churu. I think, and uh, this, and uh, some districts are then the uh, then associated with this uh, cluster also. So, uh, in that mega uh, uh, park, uh, the uh, entrepreneur can establish the its unit and uh, can get the benefit of the uh, already well established the supply chain. Consist of supply chain infrastructure, including the collection center, then primary processing centers, uh, then central processing centers, cold chain, and uh, 25 to 30 fully developed plots for entrepreneurs to set up this processing unit. So a lot of uh, infrastructure, uh, including this collection centers and everything is that is, is established in this mega park. Then project is, uh, is implemented by a special purpose vehicle and, uh, and so that the uh, state government do not required uh, to establish the separate uh, SPV and uh, this uh, uh, special purpose vehicle or a body corporate register under the company sector is established in this mega project park. So these are the some components uh, say at field collection centers, uh, there are the number of field farmers from the farmers group to field collection centers and from field collection centers to primary processing centers, the primary processing centers have the, the uh, have the uh, like pre-cooling center, then grading, pulping, sorting, waxing, packing, temporary storage, all this kind of the facilities at primary processing centers. This primary and the farmer groups or self-help groups or individual farmers. This uh, is uh, that from there it, it comes to the CC or field collection centers and from field collection centers to 
primary processing centers. Primary processing centers, they supply to the, the mega food park or SCPC. And uh, this uh, at mega food park, value added products is produced and it is uh, uh, exported or it is goes for the domestic sale. And uh, is this first products is, is goes to the domestic retail sales. So this, these are the some components uh, of the, so farmer FPOs, and they are they are giving the products to the uh, produce to the mega food park where the one can get easily the uh, the uh, or or easily can get the raw material from the different groups. So uh, like this, uh, as I said, that Nagur, Tonk, and uh, Chomu near Jaipur. The, these are the some identified the, the by the government for the food park establishment. At present in Ajmer, there is a, some in, uh, green food park is is there, and uh, uh, similarly in Gujarat also there are the three four food parks are established uh, in near to Surat, near to uh, Maisana, and uh, near to the Ahmedabad, Vadodara. So uh, they are they are doing very well job. And I have visited one food park also, and near to that, uh, and they have a very good facilities, and uh, they are really a, a uh, in near to Surat. Even flower processing is there, so uh, we have a very good scope of in uh, spice flowers, and so the one has to think about that uh, how to uh, use this mega park project. Uh, uh, that is the uh, initiated by the government for uh, for their uh, entrepreneurship development. <clears throat> so in this uh, particular scheme, uh, uh, a capital grant of uh, at the rate of fifty percent of the eligible project cost is uh, in general areas, and at the seventy five percent of eligible project cost in uh, hilly areas are provided by the government. And, uh, and this is the subjected to a maximum of 50 crore rupees. So a huge amount of the uh, capital grant is provided by the government in the, to establish the food processing industry in a mega park project. As earlier said that uh, uh, 2000 crore uh, a, a office memorandum is already issued by the government and on the 9th March and about 2000 crores were, is to be uh, made available in this agro processing units in a 313 designated food parts. So uh, there are in, in India about uh, at present uh, 313 uh, designated food parks is, is there. So it, it will provide the good capital grant to the industry. There are the working uh, um, mega food parks uh, in different uh, state uh, and uh, different uh, areas, the state. Uh, in Rajasthan, as I said, that Green Tech Mega Food Park near to Ajmer uh, is working. And uh, so far in, in different uh, states, in, in Gujarat, uh, near to Surat is there, near to Mahsana is there. So uh, these are the some uh, food parks to, that is the, uh, will help the entrepreneurs to establish their food processing industries. A very good infrastructure they have developed there. Then the, as uh, I think uh, Dr. Das has also uh, has explained this, scheme, uh, PM formalization of micro food processing entrepreneurs. And a uh, little bit I have also, so I will not go much detail in this. Uh, but the key features are the, uh, to increase the common infrastructure, marketing, branding, and two lakhs entrepreneurs to be benefited by this scheme, benefit to the FPO self-help groups and cooperatives, integration with uh, organized supply chain and increase access to credit by micro 
uh, enterprises, strengthening the institution research and training technologies, special focus on women, and uh, uh, the district cluster approach, and the credit linked uh, capital subsidy and seed capital to the self help groups. Uh, and the duration is the is, is is four years. That is the 2021 to 24, 25. So in this four years, these are the, the this scheme will be helpful for the the small scale uh, food processing industries at uh, at the district level. Uh, just I will uh, I will talk about the financial support in this. Uh, uh, the upgradation of individual micro food processing units uh, uh, and th that will be uh, can get the 35% of eligible project cost with a maximum ceiling of the 10 lakhs. And the seed capital uh, to a self help group that can get the 40,000 per group uh, uh, for the working capital and purchase of small tools. So in this uh, about 10,000 crore is uh, government has uh, put in this uh, uh, this scheme, and uh, the expenditure under this scheme would be shared with in 60 to 40 ratio between the central and state government, 90 to 10 ratio with the uh, that way. Uh, only thing is the here in the cluster is to be formed uh, of the 10 uh, farmers or 10. Uh, entrepreneurs small clusters to be formed and that can be benefited through this uh, scheme there are the other schemes for the uh, say the for the cold chain uh, 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 i think a uh, time is is is, uh, is uh, not permitting much to go in detail but uh, you can you can get the uh, this details in in a, uh, available in a, uh, various links and uh, so cold chain is also a very important uh, uh, and uh, the government is giving the uh, incentives for the development of cold chain so uh, and uh, under this uh, there are the various components that can be uh, that can be installed uh, uh, including the cold logistic and uh, ITs, processing infrastructure, quality control, supplies, export and import, domestic distribution, government. So this all these are the component of the cold chains and uh, where this benefit uh, the, 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 in that uh, entrepreneurs can get the benefit of this. A lot of uh, cold storage is uh, in, uh, established in various uh, states. Uh, if you see that uh, uh, earlier in near to Rajasthan also, there is a Banaskata district in Gujarat, uh, potato growing district. And uh, earlier there were the um, very low uh, uh, storage, uh, low quality storage uh, there. But nowadays you will find that a lot of uh, very good cold storages. And also the government is, uh, giving benefit for the solar uh, uh, assisted cold storages. If you are interested for the solar assisted cold storages, then the uh, government is also helping in that. And uh, where the electricity is not available or where there is electricity is problem, then uh, uh, solar ass uh, assisted cold storages are nowadays uh, are now coming up and rapidly and uh, the farmers are benefited through this. So this, these are the some pat, how, uh, pattern of the assistance. Uh, that is the uh, 10 crore rupees uh, that can be uh, for the civil work uh, and uh, technical work uh, that can be assisted by the government and uh, and pre-cooling units, ripening chamber, transport infrastructure. All this comes under the cold chain. So. Uh, those who are interested for this, uh, the, this kind of the establishment of the infrastructure that can avail this benefit. 
the value addition and processing infrastructure includes including the frozen storage deep freezer associated and integrated processing so 50 percent uh, at the rate of 50 percent for general areas and 75 percent of the northeastern region so one can get the capital investment of this uh, 50 percent uh, for the general areas and 75 percent in hilly regions and uh, as well as uh, for the irradiation facilities also they can get the uh, the uh, capital uh, grant uh, from the government so under this uh, cold chain creation and expansion of food processing and preservation capacities so in that uh, if interested one is interested to for the to improve the capacity and uh, modernization and expansion of the existing food processing unit then they they can get the benefit uh, through this scheme and uh, this uh, scheme implemented through the organizations such as central and state government joint ventures armor producer apo apos ngos or uh, self help groups and private limited companies and individuals and uh, the firms engaged in the establishment of tradition and modernization of this this all this kind of the uh, the sections they can or uh, individuals can get the benefit of this scheme so under this project one can get the help of the uh, cost of the plant and machineries and technical and uh, civil work the cost of utilities essential for the plant water pipeline dg set solid waste treatment plant and uh, and uh, this kind of the facility one can upgrade in the existing plant and uh, can get the benefit of uh, the maximum of the 25 percent of the total project cost and uh, this is the uh, benefit uh, how they can get the benefit patterns scheme for the agro processing cluster so there are the uh, 25 crore rupees uh, can be uh, invested under this scheme uh, and uh, five pro uh, so uh, at least uh, 10 acres of land is required means the one has to uh, as a land and all that then the cluster of the agro processing sector that can be a, a one can install there or one can have a uh, for the agro processing centers they can develop this kind of the, the cluster These are the scheme for the backward and, and the forward linkages uh, and uh, time is short. So I am not going much detail on this. I'm escaping all this. If those who are interested then can get the, the slides from uh, uh, Dr. Sanjay Jain. I have provided this uh, the slides and uh, So another scheme is the for the food safety and quality assurance uh, the infrastructure development so one can develop the food quality labs and the testing laboratory and uh, as well as the standards and the food safety and quality management system also and can get the benefit of the scheme similarly for the small scale uh, uh, food business and there are the other schemes from the National Horticulture Board as well as the National Horticulture Mission and uh, there are the like pack house uh, is, is there then the the cold storage is also there so that uh, not National Horticulture Mission also provide the subsidy on this and as well as the capital uh, benefit grant to uh, with a low uh, uh, interest on this finally i would like to go one uh, important uh, one or two important slides of the rajasthan food processing policy 2019 and uh, they can go through this who are interested in to establish the food processing industry in rajasthan 
and uh, they can go through this policy. The link is provided here. Uh, so as per that uh, uh, policy, the state says that the raw material availability is, is very good raw material available in Rajasthan, particularly in uh, 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 crops like asylum, uh, fenugreek, uh, mustard, bajra, cumin, coriander, guar, and uh, about uh, more than 10% of the nascent milk uh, production is from Rajasthan. So very good uh, scope of the food uh, milk processing in the, uh, uh, industry or unit to establish the milk processing unit. Basic infrastructure, uh, also a good uh, uh, with this, with the state uh, having a good road linkages and uh, transportation facilities, as well as the good linkages with the port of the Maharashtra and Gujarat. Then the power availability, a lot of uh, uh, solar power plants are nowadays uh, coming up in Rajasthan, so has a uh, good uh, solar and wind power generation, as well as the can, can uh, uh, claiming that uh, it can provide the 24-hour power facility to the industries. The abundance of the workforce, so far uh, the Rajasthan has the 62% of the total working population in the agriculture sector and, uh, and the 24% is, is uh, GDP, it comes from the agriculture, so uh, uh, contributes in GDP, so it's a very good uh, number of the the population that can be available so there is no problem of the manpower in uh, in this sector <clears throat> then there is a six foot parks as i said and uh, uh, about uh, 26 uh, industries are even marked as uh, the suitable for the food processing industries out of 344 uh, rico uh, uh, rico zones the 26 are earmarked as a uh, food processing industries and uh, has a eight inland container developments. So these are the some clusters uh, in, uh, in, in SS spices and uh, in that quota, Jodhpur, Pikana, Jaipur, milk processing, pulse processing. These are the some clusters developed by the government in, in, in particular cluster if a, if a, if a one is interested then the government can help the in particular uh, uh, commodity processing so in this uh, uh, there are the incentives are given to the uh, investment subsidy up to the 75% of the state tax gst uh, state gst uh, for seven years, employment generation subsidy in the form of reimbursement of 50% employer's contribution towards employee EPF and ESI for seven years, exemption from payment of 100% electricity duty for seven years, exemptions from payment of 100% of land tax for seven years, exemption from payment of 100% market fee, Mundi fee for seven years, exemptions from payment of 100% stamp duty on the purchase of lease and sublease land and exemptions from the payment of 100% of uh, conversion charges uh, that is converting the land to a uh, industry or a agri agricultural land to the industry. Then the 5% in interest subsidy on loan uh, taken by the inter enterprise from the financial institution and uh, for a period of five years subject to maximum of this 25 lakhs and capital subsidy of 25% of the investment made on the plant machinery and uh, subject to a maximum of, uh, I think, uh, 25 crores. Then the uh, additional sub incentives uh, uh, is given to the backward and uh, most backward areas uh, in the uh, applicable investment uh, subsidy as as, uh, uh, and uh, additional two years of uh, that we give maximum of two nine years. That means in uh, in a normal case that is seven years, but in for the backward areas it is nine years. Whereas uh, for the most backward areas it is ten years. Then the 
similarly uh, in earlier cases uh, for general cases it is it is 7 here it is 9 years and uh, as well as the uh, payment of electricity duties and everything that is also a, a, a two years more as compared to uh, normal cases and uh, in most backward areas one more year is exempted then mukhya mantri lagu udyog prosan yojana in that also that uh, uh, interest on the capital and uh, uh, the, the subsidy is also available and uh, one can take the loan of the rupees 10 crores and in that uh, with a uh, and uh, with a low interest uh, one can get the uh, loan of this uh, 10 crore rupees similarly the under this uh, uh, interest subsidy under the mlupy uh, scheme the, uh, the up to the 25 lakhs interest subsidy is 8 percent 25 to 5 crores the interest subsidy is 6 percent and 5 crore to 10 crores 5 percent so i think uh, i tried to uh, give uh, the as much as possible uh, the what are the different schemes and what are the different policies at state level and uh, at uh, national level even though there are the very good uh, linkages nowadays available and on hand uh, the everything is available forms are available uh, then the guide, guidelines are available and then uh, i think uh, i think uh, as we fill up the income tax form online similarly one can fill up the online form for the establishment of the food processing industry and uh, uh, can process that uh, can process these forms at district level and besides this there are the uh, at district level uh, also there are the other agencies also available to help the the entrepreneurs uh, maybe a district jilla uh, udyog uh, kendra or district uh, uh, industry centers okay this is also a one agency so one can get get the information from there and uh, can get the uh, uh, generate their interest and if they have the interest uh, i think uh, this is the really a good time to be a entrepreneurs and uh, develop their skills and uh, can uh, get the good uh, uh, income through the small scale or uh, those who have a capacity then can have a large scale entrepreneurs so uh, with this words i'm thankful to the organizers for giving me this opportunity uh, to express my views and uh, to say this something uh, to uh, uh, present uh, the, this uh, uh, food processing uh, schemes and uh, policies in front of you Thank you very much. Over Thank to Sanjay. Sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, for uh, such an elaborate uh, mapping uh, map of uh, government uh, programs and uh, the linkages which uh, the students who have who are, who have passed out or searching for something noble they want to do, they can obviously uh, use these uh, links and uh, the programs thank you sir thank you so much uh, now you. i request uh, dr sanjay jain sir to convey the formal vote of thanks thank you madam am i audible yes 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 sir yes. you are audible sir thank you thank you our chief guest of this webinar dr sk sharma sir director of research mput Eminent speakers of this webinar, Dr. Nijiket Kotwariwale, Director, ICAR, Central Institute of Post Harvest Engineering and Technology, Ludhiana, Dr. S.K. Das, sir, Dean, College of Agriculture, Engineering and Technology, OUAT, Puneshwar, Dr. P.M. Chauhan, sir, Professor, Junagadh Agriculture University, Junagadh, Dr. Mahesh Kothari, sir, Director Planning and Monitoring, Dr. Virindra Nepalia, sir, Dr. V.K. Sharma, sir, Deans and Directors, presently connected, Co-Convener of the webinar, Dr. N.K. Jain, sir, 
Dean CDFT, co-organizing secretaries, Dr. P.S. Champawas, sir, Dr. Vikramadhi Tidhave, sir, Dr. N.L. Pawar, Dr. Nikita Madam, Dr. Deepak Rajpurohit, head of departments, faculty members, student coordinators and all the participants, guests and present and future food processors. It is my honor and privilege to conclude this national webinar on the theme food processing and value addition, innovations, opportunities and government schemes by extending a vote of thanks. We are indeed very grateful even Today he is absent, but in his absentia, I would like to mention the blessings of Dr. Narendra Singh Rathod Saha for successful organizing of this particular webinar. We are grateful to Dr. S.K. Sharma, sir, Director Research MPUAT, for sparing his valuable time at a very short notice. Sir, we are highly grateful to you for your blessings and addressing the participants and sharing your experiences and ideas benefiting the participants. We are grateful to today's eminent speakers who justified their topics. Dr. Nichiket Kotwali Hawali, sir, Director ICR CFET, who especially mentioned very elaborative and comprehensive presentation on various innovative technologies recently in use and going to be in use. Dr. S.K. Das, sir, Dean, College of Agriculture, Engineering and Technology, OUAT, in spite of his very busy schedule, sparing his valuable time, sir, we are grateful to you. Dr. P.M. Chauhan, sir, Professor, Junagadh Agriculture University, also needs a great appreciation on justifying this particular topic for sparing his valuable time, sharing his experiences, providing guidance to the participants of this webinar, gracing the occasion, with their online presence, sir. We are highly grateful to you all for addressing the participants in spite of your very busy schedule and activities. We are also thankful to Dr. P.K. Singh, sir, Dean CTI, for taking keen interest and suggesting his visionary thoughts and extending all facilities for successful organization of this webinar. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to convey my sincere thanks to all dean and directors of the university head of departments, faculty members, and participants from different places to attend this webinar. Many participants from the different parts of the country are participating in this webinar. We are, in fact, highly encouraged with this. We owe the success of this webinar to all the participants, and we seek their continual support. The financial assistance received from Institutional Development Program under the National Agriculture Higher Education Plan ICR for organizing this webinar is gratefully and sincerely acknowledged. We are thankful to all those who have been given support and cooperation and success of this webinar, especially the technical support given by Dr. Vikramaditya Devesar is highly acknowledged. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to express my sincere thanks to all the team members of this webinar, the co-convener of the webinars, Dr. N.K. Jain, sir, Co-organizing secretaries, Dr. P.S. Champawas, sir, Dr. Vikramadhyay Dave, sir, head electrical engineering, Dr. N.L. Pamar, sir, head renewable energy engineering, Dr. Nikita Vadhavan, madam, Dr. Deepak Rajpurohit ji, head of departments, faculty members, and student coordinators. I thank you once again all. Thank you, sir. Uh, With the permission of the all the uh, expert speakers, should we conclude, sir? Dr. Nepalia, sir? Chauhan, sir? Sanjay, sir? Can we conclude, sir? Vikesh Sharma, sir? Can we conclude?